Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Welcome to An Academy Neat English. Am I perfectly audible and visible to you all? Hi guys. Hello, hello, hello. Avengers assemble. Very good, very good guys. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And how are you all? How are you all? Excited for this neat replica paper? Are you people excited for this neat replica paper? Right, hundred questions from the biology, fifty questions from chemistry, fifty questions from physics, just like the neat examination. And tell me how many of you are uh, near to your examination center? Because sometimes you know our center is quite far, so we travel. So how many of you are traveling and still watching our session? How many of you are there near to your examination center, guys? So are you people excited? Hey, na excitement and nervousness at the same time. It's a it's a wonderful emotion. It's scary as well, but it is a wonderful emotion. You are scared as well, and you are excited for your paper. So tell me about your emotion, guys. Tell me about your uh, emotion. How are you people feeling? How are you people feeling? Super excited. Want to do speed leap? I will do it. Trust me, I will do it. You are scared. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. And girls, girls, I posted a video for you, right? Do check it out. And still, if there is any doubt, I am here. Don't worry. Formula revision. Are now you just just leave everything, revise whatever you have done so far, guys. Today just solve few PYQs, just see few short notes only. Otherwise, no need to do anything. Focus on your sleep. Focus on your health. Focus on the documents that you need to carry for the examination hall. Focus on your admit card and keep yourself calm. You just need to train it today. You just need to train your brain today. Just 500 meters away. That's good. That's good. So I hope you all are doing very well. I hope you are excited for this paper. So without wasting the time, let's start the neat replica paper, guys. So all of you, we have one three five zero students here, and hit the like button, guys. Hit the like button. And do subscribe our channel. And see, see, see. If you are one hour away from your center or two hours away from your center, now, but still, still, but you go very quickly because in vigilator they are going to check everything right. So might be it will take time. So please reach examination center even two hours before the paper. Okay, two hours before the paper. But you replica means copy, replication. Don't you know about replication? Replication. So we are going to ask you the questions the way NTA used to ask you. Okay, the way NTA used to ask you, we are going to ask you the questions in that way. I have one suggestion for all of you, right? Sometimes things are there in our head that that number of questions should be from human physiology, that number of questions should be from plant, that number of questions should be from genetics, right? And when we find a paper in which you know the sequence is not like that, let's say less number of questions are from human physio, more number of questions are from plant physio, we feel scared. Right, we feel scared. Right, so this is what you need to manage for tomorrow. Okay, okay. So now, without wasting the time, let's start the session. We are going to start with the botany first. Right, we are going to start with the botany first. So I think you all remember this thing. There will be two sections: section A, section B. Read the instructions carefully. Section A, thirty-five questions are there, and you have to. All questions are compulsory. So if you know the answer of all the thirty-five, just attempt it. And when you talk about the B, right? When you talk about the section B, fifteen questions will be there. And out of that fifteen questions, you people need to attempt ten questions only, right? Ten questions only. No need to do over attemptation here because they will consider your first ten answers, right? First ten answers, right, guys? Right, guys. So now let's practice the question. And here you have your first question. Speed up, guys. All of you just need to answer that. Hit the like button and do subscribe our channel. And thank you for making us 38k subscriber family. Let's make it 45. It's okay, Jayashree. Whatever you have studied so far, now just revise that only. Right, Angelina. Thank you so much. So. Guys, we have to finish it ASAP. So I am going to explain the answers as well. An example for opposite philotaxy is. So if you people remember, I have posted one trick for you. CM sir, please teach GOC who Alastoni. So the first question is from that trick only. CM sir, please teach GOC who Alastoni. So here opposite philotaxy. The example is going to be guava and calotropis, right, bache? The example is going to be guava and calotropis. Is that clear, everyone? Next question. New varieties of plant they are produced by. Easy, easy. New varieties of plants they are produced by. Guys, I am going to be very quick today. Okay, my speed is going to be. 
ओके सो आफ्टर मी केमिस्ट्री आफ्टर दैट फिजिक्स बिकॉज वी आर गोइंग टू फॉलो द सेम सीक्वेंस दैट वी शुड फॉलो इन द फाइनल नीट पेपर ओके एंड एज आई सेट प्लीज फिल अप द ओ एम आर शीट एज वेल प्लीज फिल अप द ओ एम आर शीट एज वेल right you need to focus you need to work on your speed on your time management right guys so new varieties of plant how can we make them obviously with the help of selection and hybridization with the help of selection and hybridization we can form the new varieties now the next question guys name of sleeden and shawn are associated with one of the easiest question ever and such easy question even you are going to get in your paper yes everyone quick 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 the number of likes should be 2k plus all of you just hit the like button do subscribe our channel as well guys So answer this question. Name of Schleiden and Sean. Schleiden and Sean. I don't think that you need explanation for that. It is one of the easiest question. Yes. So it is the cell theory, guys. Remember, Schleiden, botanist, because it is also a separate question. Sean, Sean, zoologist, zoologist. Sean, on, oh, zo, zoologist. Sean the ship. Next question. Chlorophyll A is absent in which of the following photosynthetic organism? chlorophyll a is absent in which of the following photosynthetic organism where chlorophyll a is absent chlorophyll a universal pigment present in all photosynthetic organism but it is absent where is it absent yes bachche akshay danish priya deepak sindhu so many names are there guys so many names are there what should be the correct answer here of course here it is the bacteria in the bacteria you people will not find the chlorophyll a but if it is a cyanobacteria that is blue green algae then yes chlorophyll a will be present and if you guys are having any doubt from this particular paper you have to post the comments today i will resolve each and every comment right i'll be very active in the comment section later on obviously after the session i will answer each and every question because i don't want you people to make any mistake tomorrow okay okay so next question which of the following flowers produce a short seed set even in the absence of pollinator even in the absent of pollinator following flowers produce a short seed set even in the absence of pollinator guys speed up speed up speed up all of you yes yes obviously the answer here is common pen, uh, pansy mark the trick mark the trick everyone the trick here is voc viola oxalis comelina viola oxalis comelina what is it viola oxalis comelina voc having two types of flower clistogamous chiasmogamous clistogamous chiasmogamous next question weasels they are different from tracheids in weasels they are different from tracheids in right weasels they are different from tracheids in guys speed up weasels and tracheids how are they different how are they different how are they different it's your final neat paper take it like that fill up the omr sheet with the questions guys you can put a you can stop the video you can fill up the omr sheet and then you can check the next question but do it in that way bachche do it in that way you should check how many uh, how many seconds you are taking for one question what should be the answer weasels different from tracheids tracheids and weasels they are the part of they are the part of xylem xylem is what complex permanent tissue so see how are they different they consist of vertical rows of cell with cross walls dissolved this is what you need to know both are dead yes so it is not the option derived from single cell nopes right so how are they different how are they different so they they are different in this way in that they consist of vertical rows of cells with cross uh, walls dissolved done next question phloem sap is mainly composed of easiest question phloem sap alkaline in nature phloem sap is mainly consists of it is mainly composed of guys speed up mainly composed of yes very easy it is it will have the water and the sucrose sucrose is also known as the invert sugar remember it always it is also known as the invert sugar right invert sugar made up of glucose plus fructose next question how is the dna of cell affected during s phase of the cell cycle how is the dna of the cell affected during s phase of the cell cycle what will happen in s phase of the cell cycle all of you guys hit the like button we have more than 2000 student and number of likes are too less hit the like button do subscribe our channel so what should be the answer here how is the dna of cell affected during s phase of cell cycle dna amount per cell is doubled per cell is halved tripled of course we know that what is going to happen the dna will be doubled the 2c will become 4c but the number of chromosome will remain same number of chromosome will remain 
same what is going to happen number of chromosome will remain same next question plants with edible roots oh my god roots are edible we can eat the roots we can eat the roots plant with edible roots include we can eat the roots 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 you know the answer the root modification for the storage of food yes so obviously here carrot reddish sweet potato they all are root they all are root and i'll add one more question here sweet potato and potato both of them both of them are example of analogous organs because their main function is same that is storage of food but the internal structure is different next question male and female gametophyte are independent and free living in male and female gametophyte are independent and free living in independent free living independent free living gametophyte is independent free, free living sphagnum right because gametophyte is independent it is a free living so in the case of pinus diplontic life cycle castor is also mustard is also so obviously we are left with the sphagnum we are left with the sphagnum next question dna fingerprinting refers to dna fingerprinting refers to yes everyone dna fingerprinting it refers to guys speed up speed up DNA fingerprinting, you know that what is going to happen in the DNA fingerprinting is it, it is the DNA typing, it is the DNA profiling, right? Bache? So, here it refers to the molecular analysis of profiles of DNA sample. We know that 99.9% .9 DNA is same in all the human beings. There is a difference of only 0.1%. Right, there is the difference of only 0.1% and on the basis of that 0.1% we can differentiate two individual with the help of the technique DNA fingerprinting. Any doubt guys, any doubt? Next question, as a tree grows very old, which of the following increases more rapidly in thickness? Tree is getting old, tree is getting old. I don't, uh, I think today you all are okay with my speed, isn't it? Yes. So it is the heart wood. Remember heart, 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 dil, dil, d, duranum, alburnum and duranum. This is what we discussed now. Heart wood we are talking here. Next, basal part of ovule which lies opposite to micropyle. Opposite to micropyle is the keyword here, guys. Opposite to micropyle is the keyword here. Opposite to micropyle is the keyword here. So obviously it is going to be the chalazal end. It is going to be the chalazal end. For entry into the respiratory pathway, fatty acid must convert into, right? We want that fatty acid to enter in the resp uh, respiratory pathway. Then, then, then what is going to happen, guys? What is going to happen? For entry into the respiratory pathway, your fatty acid needs to be converted into exactly acetyl coenzyme. And whatever you have taken, body is going to take the protein, body is going to take the carbs, body is going to take the required fat. Ultimately, everything will be converted into fats. So, acetyl coenzyme, it is also a, like an intermediate. Next question, which of the following set represent the member of Solanaceae? Potato family, Solanaceae. Potato family, Solanaceae. Which of the following set represent the member of Solanaceae family? Solanaceae family, potato family, potato family, potato family, Belladonna, Ashwagandha, Petunia. Petunia is very common. Petunia is very common. Belladonna, Ashwagandha, Petunia. Next question, haplodiplontic life cycle is observed in? Haplodiplontic life cycle is observed in? Guys, you know a lot. You are going to nail it, right? Trust me, you know everything. This is what you need to think in this last 24 hours. Trust me. Right? No need to revise too many things now. Just solve the PYQ and a few concepts if you want to just check from short notes, that's fine. Otherwise, no need to revise the syllabus, the entire syllabus now. Now, just give relaxation to your brain. Tomorrow is your division day. You need to give your best, guys. So, haplodiplontic life cycle is observed in both bryo and terido, but in bryo, gametophyte is the dominant in terido. Sporophyte is the dominant. Next question, the endosperm of angiosperm is developed from. The endosperm of angiosperm is developed from. Guys, again, a very easy question. The endosperm, the endosperm of angiosperm is developed from. Obviously, it is developed from the polar nuclei. Next, women whose mother was colorblind with normal vision. Women, mother was colorblind. Women, mother was colorblind with normal but but that women is having the normal vision she marries a man with a normal vision the probability of their child having color blindness the probability of their child having color blindness yes 
the probability of their child having color blindness women with normal vision but her mother was color blind her mother was color blind right her mother was color blind so see when you talk about the color blindness obviously it is also a recessive trait isn't it it is also a recessive trait so if mother was color blind means both the x are going to be having that defective allele both the x are going to be going to have that defective allele so obviously obviously this women she must be carrier so now just take it in that way right so what should be the answer what should be the answer guys what should be the answer i think you all know the answer 1 by 4th isn't it because they are asking their child okay the probability of their child having color blind so if you are thinking that why ma'am you are not considering it because here the female is carrier the son is having the disease so that is why it is 1 by 4 that is why it is 25 percent next question replication in e coli replication in e coli dna starts in a definite region that region is known as replication in e coli dna it starts in a region that region is known as obviously we know that it is the ori site or i site origin of replication next cyanophasian granules and glycogen granules are examples of cyanophasian and glycogen granules cyanophasian and glycogen granules we know the answer guys it is the inclusion bodies which are meant for the storage next question which of the following is correct about non living objects non living objects you have to figure out the correct statement guys speed up you have to figure out the correct statement yes what should be the correct answer here what should be the correct answer here which of the following is correct about non living object that does not grow they show intrinsic growth extrinsic growth show both so obviously they are going to show the extrinsic growth and for that we use the word accretion the word is accretion the word is accretion next the lichen commonly known as the reindeer uh, reindeer mo moss is interesting question hai the lichen commonly known as the reindeer moss is obviously it is cladonia if you don't know the answer just mark it it is cladonia next question the stamens are attached to the petals oh my god stamens are attached to the petals epipetalous condition is there epipetalous condition is there the condition is epipetalous obviously it is the case of brinjal it is the case of brinjal right next question what are the pitfall traps that are seen in the members of genus nepenthes 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 the example of morphology nepenthes yes bache you know the answer guys you know the answer so the answer here is leaf leaf is going to form that pitfall trap leaf is going to form that next if the gynoecium is present in the topmost position of the thalamus then the flower is referred to as gynoecium is at topmost position gynoecium the female part is at topmost position so obviously you know that the flower is going to be the hypogynous and the ovary is going to be superior bache the ovary is going to be superior hypogynous flower it is hypogynous flower it is next cock cambium cock and secondary cost uh, secondary cortex they are collectively called secondary cortex is included cock cambium cock and secondary cortex we are not talking about the secondary phloem here we are not talking about the secondary phloem here we are not talking about the secondary phloem here so obviously it is going to be periderm right it is going to be so cock cambium is phylogen it is phylogen what is the word cock phylum right secondary cortex phyloderm so these are the four uh, terms that you need to focus next question microfilaments are involved in microfilaments are involved in guys speed up speed up microfilaments they are involved in the word is microfilament remember it is also the cy cytoskeletal element here we are talking about the actin filaments here we are talking about the actin filaments your pseudopodia formation is because of this right so even the cyclosis amoeboid movement that is pseudopodia uh, pseudopodia formation furrow formation during cell formation cell division in the animal cell division we used to discuss about the cleavage furrow na so i always mention actin filament is there so your microfilament means actin filament so that is why correct answer here is all of these next question pga as the first phosphoglyceraldehyde or phosphoglyceric acid what is it 
what is it phosphoglyceric acid as the first co2 fixation product was discovered in the photosynthesis of it is the pga guys it is the pga where will you find it where will you find it we are talking about the pga of course it is in the case of algae right it was discovered in the photosynthesis of algae we found it in the case of algae for the experiment that material was used basically next question which enzyme catalyzes the link reaction guys we need to be very quick we need to be very quick which enzyme catalyzes the link reaction i have repeated it many times in complete plant physiology revision video obviously it is going to be pyruvate dehydrogenase it's a complex what is the meaning of complex that it is made up of so many enzymes it is made up of so many enzymes next question early fruit drop is prevented by spraying early fruit drop is prevented by spraying early fruit drop is prevented by spraying early fruit drop is prevented by spring obviously we know the answer it is the auxin it is the auxin next question moss spore germinate to form moss spore germinate to form it is germinate to form protonema remember protonema protonema is also having evolutionary significance when you talk about the mosses the spore will germinate it will form protonema which is basically the thin filament algal like filament then it will form the leafy gametophyte so it even shows that there is a like uh, mosses are ya yeah, bryophytes are evolved from some algal like ancestors so it is having the evolutionary significance next question the term polyadelphus is related to the term polyadelphus is related to we know that it is related to the andrisium and ratium next question radial symmetry is found in the flowers of radial symmetry is found in the flowers of radial symmetry remember mummy daddy chili america mummy daddy chili america mustard dhatura chili and here america actinomorphic which is radial actinomorphic which is radial so here the correct answer is brassica because mustard is brassica next adventitious root which arises from the stem penetrates into the soil and helps support the stem is called the word here is adventitious root and they are going to they are going to arise from the stem so obviously p for pillar p for prop root repeated question hai ye so next which of the following hormones can replace vernalization which of the following hormone can replace vernalization again gibberellin what is vernalization vernalization is basically the cold treatment it is basically the cold treatment so it is replaced by gibberellin next question placentation in tomato and lemon very basic placentation is tomato and lemon and yes we are done with the section a so section a means 35 questions section b total 15 questions will be there but in final paper how many questions do we need to attempt we need to attempt the 10 questions so guys you have to attempt first 10 is that clear you have to attempt first 10 is that clear tell me tell me tell me send that fire emojis if that clear tell me fire tell send me that fire emoji in the chat section if it is clear section b will have 15 questions options are there but you have to attempt 10 questions only you have to attempt 10 questions only done 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 that fire emojis and hit the like button guys and if you are new to our channel do subscribe this channel because this sesh this channel is one of the best channels for the neat preparation and soon you will realize it you will realize it this channel is going to be the best channel for the neat preparation so placentation in tomato and lemon very repeated question that's why i'm asking it again and again and even in my last sessions also i asked the same question tomato and lemon exile placentation is there in tomato edible placenta is there right exile next stomatal opening is affected by right so such type of question where long statements are there in final paper just figure out the question which are having very short statements so that you can uh, you can read that quickly and you can save your time but but accuracy is also important so take care of that too so answer this question stomatal opening is affected by guys stomatal opening is affected by i think today we can accomplish our target i told you that in one and half hour we have to finish the 90 question practice but some students were like when we, we will finish it in 90 minutes uh, sorry in uh, 60 minutes so let's see let's see guys 
Stomatal opening is affected by stomatal opening is affected by the carbon dioxide concentration. It is not the oxygen concentration. It is the carbon dioxide concentration. Even the temperature, even the light. Next, which enzyme complex is responsible for reduction of molecular nitrogen to the level of ammonia? So, guys, you know that molecular nitrogen to ammonia. Here we are talking about the nitrogen fixation, right? And you know that which enzyme is there? It is the nitrogenase. And here, one more trick is present. That is NAMO. NAMO. What is the meaning of NAMO? Nitrogenase molybdenum. Nitrogenase molybdenum. It requires molybdenum. What is the trick, guys? The trick here is NAMO. The trick here is NAMO. Is that clear? Is that clear? So, what is it? It is a NAMO. NAMO. This is what you need to remember. And it is anaerobic. It cannot be effective. It cannot be functional in the uh, presence of oxygen. First CO2 fixation product of C4 plant is first CO2 fixation product of C4 plant is first stable product we are asking first stable product we are asking first stable product quick 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 speed up guys speed up first carbon dioxide fixation product of C4 plant C4 plant, it is going to be oxaloacetic acid. That is why we call this cycle as C4 cycle because, because the first stable product is having four carbons, oxaloacetic acid OAA. And here, PEP, phosphoenol pyruvate is going to accept the carbon dioxide in the presence of phosphoenol pyruvate case, right? It is It will form OAA. Done. Next question, the process of formation of microspore from a pollen mother cell is called. From pollen mother cell, we have to form the microspore. The formation of microspore is there, easiest microsporogenesis. So, in the paper, be very careful, do not mark megasporogenesis, it is micro. Next, function of filiform apparatus is 2. Function of filiform apparatus is 2. What is the function of filiform apparatus, guys? What is the function of filiform apparatus? What is the function of filiform apparatus? We know it, we know it. It is going to guide the entry of the pollen tube. It is present in the synergid. Next question, in a cross between a male and the female, both heterozygous for sequel cell anemia. Lovely question. In a cross between a male and female, both are heterozygous for sequel cell anemia. Like this is the scenario and I think I have asked it so many times. What percentage of progeny will be diseased? Not the carrier, diseased. Not the carrier, diseased. Of course, it is going to be 25 percent solve it. Next, association of H1 with the nucleosome indicates when H1 is associated with the nucleosome, it indicates when H1 is associated with the nucleosome, guys, it indicates what? It indicates what? Remember the nucleosome octamer H2A, two copies of H2A, H2B, two copies of H3, two copies of H4. Then your DNA will coil over it. Then H1 will get linked to it. So, when H1 is linked, it is telling us that DNA is condensed into a chromatin fiber. Next question, in which of the following steps, large and small particles are removed from sewage through sequential filtration and sedimentation? Sequential filtration and sedimentation. The word is sequential filtration and sedimentation. Of course, it is a primary treatment also known as physical treatment. Next, the breakdown of detritus into smaller particles by earthworm. Earthworm is going to break the detritus, dead organic matter. Earthworm is going to break the detritus, dead organic matter. Yes, it is going to be fragmentation. Next, what gas caused the Bhopal gas disaster and when did it occur? What gas caused the Bhopal gas disaster and when did it occur? When did it occur? Obviously, it was occur in 1980. It was there in 1984, methyl isocyanate. It was methyl isocyanate. Next question, the Montreal Protocol was called to examine the emission of, the Montreal Protocol was called to examine the emission of, it was called to examine the emission of, it was called to examine the emission of chlorofluorocarbons. Ultimately, Montreal Protocol for ozone depleting substances. Right, it was called to examine the emission of ozone depleting substances and this chlorofluorocarbon is also the ozone depleting substance. Next, which of the following system is responsible for uniform mixture of oxygen in a stirred tank bioreactor? Uniform mixture, uniform mixture, we have to mix the oxygen uniformly. 
Guys, you know the answer. It is the agitator system. It is the agitator system. Pollination in water hyacinth is through. Pollination in, in water hyacinth is through. Yes, guys. Guys, we have more than 2500 students, but the number of likes, they are less. Number of subscribers, they are less. Hit the subscribe button and hit the like button as well. So, pollination in water hyacinth is through. Water hyacinth, cornea, terror of Bengal, which is having the offset, vegetatively propagated. It, it, it uh, propagates at a very faster rate. So, we know the correct answer here. So, here in the case of water uh, hyacinth, although it is aquatic, but it does not use the water for the pollination. It goes for the insect. So, even the water hyacinth and can you quote one more example? Can you quote one more example? The aquatic plants which are aquatic but they do not use the water for the pollination they do not use the water for the pollination can you tell me can you tell me can you tell me anyone water hyacinth is there water lily water lily very good very good excellent next the main difference between gram positive and gram negative bacteria gram positive which will give Violet color with the gram stain, which will give color with the gram stain. Gram negative is not going to give that. So, 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 cell wall. In the case of gram positive, cell wall is going to be very thick. Peptidoglycan layer is going to be very thick. But when you people talk about the gram negative, so we will be having this plasma membrane and then the cell wall is not so thick then again lipid layer is there so that is why the stain will come out so here i have one more trick for all of you come in and come in and come in and stain okay crystal violet iodine alcohol that is washing and again the double stain okay come in and stain is the trick for you next oh wow we are done with the botany question so guys are you excited for the zoology question i told you now that today we are going to finish it in less than one hour nah, i told you that in uh, one hour 15 minutes but many students were like we will finish it in one hour so excited excited for zoology we are done with the botany so tell me your score guys tell me your score tell me your score quick Quick, quick, quick. How's it? How's it? Feeling good? Have a good vibes, ma'am. Trust me, even in the paper, you are going to get easy question. Few questions will be difficult. I am not denying that. But majority of questions, they are going to be very easy when it comes to the biology. When it comes to the biology. So, do you want the PDF? Do you want the PDF? Huh? Don't worry, you will get it. So, let's focus on the. Uh oh. It is for the botany. Uh -oh. We need the zoology questions. Now, let's solve the zoology. Right? Let's solve the zoology. Do you need the still need the PDF? Don't worry, I'll share it. Don't worry, I'll share it. Done? Done? The speed is okay now? Okay, let's start. Let's start the zoology part now. Feeling good with these questions? That, 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 that's nice. So, Let's take a one minute break and tell me all okay. Any doubt from the question that we have practiced? Any doubt from the question that we have practiced? Four negative. Oh, 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 it's okay, but still. Right. So in the paper, do not go for the over attemptation. Right. If you do not know the answer, please do not mark it. Right. Then do not mark it. That is important. So let's start with the section a of the zoology although in zoology few questions from genetics are also there but TK, don't worry about that okay there is no need to get worried of that genetics because it is having the high weightage so i mixed few questions here and there ecosystem 175 diplontic life cycle so okay you can revise that part no doubts are there super excited start for zoology very good 
ओके सो हियर वी हैव द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन रीड द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट एंड चूज द सेट ऑफ करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट रीड द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट एंड चूज द सेट ऑफ करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट गाइस नाउ इट इज अ स्टेटमेंट बेस्ड टॉपिक सो ऑब्वियसली बी क्विक बी क्विक इट इज अ स्टेटमेंट बेस्ड टॉपिक इट्स अ स्टेटमेंट बेस्ड टॉपिक what is it it's a statement based topic it's a statement based topic so what should be the correct answer what should be the correct answer so euchromatin is loosely packed or not so you know that it is euchromatin euchromatin is the one you means it true you means it true true so obviously we are going to transcribe the euchromatin so obviously it is going to be loosely packed heterochromatin is transcriptionally active no it is transcriptionally inactive it is transcriptionally inactive histone octamer is wrapped by negatively charged dna in nucleosome histone octamer is wrapped by negatively charged dna yes it is a fact histones are rich in lysine and arginine it is a fact a typical nucleosome contain 200 400 base pair or 200 base pair so here the correct answer is a c and d only euchromatin is loosely packed but 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 heterochromatin is transcriptionally inactive it is transcriptionally inactive so then uh, histones are rich in lysine and arginine yes it is a typical nucleosome contains 400 base pair okay so i think here the histones are done done next question dna polymorphism forms the basis of dna polymorphism forms the basis of it should be 400 exactly it should be 400 base pairs here so dna polymorphism forms the basis of quick guys dna polymorphism it forms the basis of it's a pyq it's a pyq so speed up so here the correct answer is going to be genetic mapping and dna fingerprinting bache last year you know what happened last year what happened many teachers even many teachers many students they just mark the dna mapping a uh, genetic mapping but actually it is genetic mapping and dna fingerprinting it is the statement from ncert right it is a statement from ncert but we missed it next question assertion and reason based question it is tertiary structure of protein makes them biologically active reason it is maintained by covalent bond only so what should be the correct answer here tertiary structure of a protein it makes th them biologically active tertiary structure of protein makes them biologically active option b was correct ha i i told you about the correct lines here na so you just focus there tertiary structure of protein makes them biologically active reason it is maintained by covalent bond is it so is it so is it so guys speed up it is a assertion based question so that is why i am giving you the time so obviously tertiary structure makes them biologically active it is a correct statement but it is not maintained by covalent bond only so here this is the correct answer assertion is true but the reason is false next question here again the statement based question it is the release of sperms into the seminiferous tubule is called spermiation statement 2 spermiogenesis is the process of formation of sperms from spermatogonia so what should be the correct answer here it's a statement based question what should be the correct answer here for reading such questions you need time so for such question even i am going to slow down my pace okay so answer this quickly answer this quest quickly statement 1 statement 2 the release of sperms into the seminiferous tubule is called spermiation statement 2 spermiogenesis is the process of formation of sperms from spermatogonia so we know that when sperms are released into seminiferous tubule the word is spermiation but spermiogenesis is the process of formation of sperms from spermatogonia is it so is it so of course not because that should be spermatogenesis when it is the spermiogenesis spermated are going to form the sperm right spermated are going to form the sperm so obviously here the statement 1 is correct but statement 2 is incorrect statement 1 is correct statement 2 is incorrect next question which of the following drugs is a very effective sedative and pain killer and is very useful in patients who have undergone surgery who have undergone surgery which a 200 base pairs will be there which of the following drug is very effective sedative and pain killer and very useful in patient who have undergone surgery 
pain killer is the word sedative and pain killer obviously it is morphine morphine is also known as analgesic and uh, right it is a pain reliever and you know one more thing right the diacetylation of morphine will form the diacetylation of morphine will form the diacetylation of morphine will form heroin okay it will form heroin this is what you need to remember next question night blindness and xerothelmia xerothelmia are generally conditions associated with a deficiency of which vitamin night blindness and xerothelmia night blindness and xerothelmia it is associated with it is associated with of course it is associated with the vitamin a because vitamin a is going to form that retinal and you know that that retinal is going to form that rhodopsin rhodopsin is made up of two part right retinal plus opsin opsin is the protein part retinal vitamin a derivative so vitamin a is required so if there is the deficiency of vitamin a night blindness and xerothelmia will be there the next question a color blind girl is rare because she will born only when a color blind girl is rare because she will born only when tell me she will born only when guys fast 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 the color blind girl is rare because she will born only when when her mother and her mother and paternal pater maternal grandmother were color blind why are we saying maternal grandmother right because you know that criss cross inheritance is there criss cross inheritance is there right if there will be the if maternal grandmother is having the disease so obviously it will pass it to to the son as well it is going to pass that x to the son as well are you getting my point so that is why we are opting this option okay that is why we are opting this option so mother is also color blind and it is indicating that father is also color blind so obviously in that case the girl will also be color blind next question in miller's experiment he used a mixture of uh, methane ammonia hydrogen and water vapor in a closed flask to mimic early earth condition what was the temperature at which this flask was kept what was the temperature at which this flask was kept in miller's experiment he used a mixture of methane ammonia h2 and water vapor in a closed closed flask yes bachche are paternal paternal wait wait i'll tell you i'll explain that question but as of now mark it so it is the 800 degree celsius what is it it is 800 degree celsius so what other question they can ask you from this part you know that when you talk about the operan and heldin theory right when you talk about the operan and heldin theory right operan and heldin theory so you know that they explained the evolution in two ways that there will be the chemogeny there will be the biogeny so miller and ure they provided the experimental proof for it right they provided the experimental proof for it so in their apparatus they use the mixture of gases so here you know that uh, two parts of methane one part of ammonia two part of hydrogen was used another thing is temperature 800 degree celsius so uh, when they uh, did it for the first time so they got the amino acids the alanine was there asparagin was there and alanine aspartic acid and and can you tell me the name of the amino acid can you tell me the name of the amino acid can you tell me the name of the amino acid ratio is important temperature is important 18 for 18 days they conducted this experiment what can you tell me which amino acids were there three amino acids were there alanine was there aspartic acid was there and and guys i am too fast i cannot increase my speed yes okay and here if you are get, guys are getting confused her mother and maternal okay it is pater maternal grandmother paternal grandmother it is that's all paternal grandmother it is so next next in gene therapy of ada that is adenosine demyelinase uh, deficiency the patient requires periodic infusion of genetically engineered lymphocytes because bachche read that type of questions very slowly whenever you will find statement based question or lengthy question read them very slowly otherwise you will make a mistake okay otherwise you will make the mistake done done so in gene therapy of ad adenosine demyelinase the patient requires periodic infusion of genetically engineered lymphocyte because lymphocyte from patient blood are grown in a culture outside the body genetically engineered lymphocytes are not immortal cells retroviral 
right vector is introduced into these lymphocytes gene isolated from marrow cells producing ada it's very simple because when they did this technique so you know that lymphocytes which were introduced in the patient right that lymphocytes were not immortal right right they were mortal right so that is why here the correct answer is b next question a person suffers puncture in his chest cavity in an accident without any damage to the lungs its its effect could be a person suffers puncture in his chest cavity in an accident that person got the ch the chest cavity got punctured so what is going to happen here what is going to happen here yes so obviously there will be the cessation of breathing why is it so because that pressure difference will not be created the chest cavity is punctured the air from the surrounding will directly enter here in the in the chest cavity so breathing will not be there breathing will not be there next question ecg depicts depolarization and repolarization process during cardiac cycle in ecg of a normal healthy individual one of the following wave is not represented which is not represented in ecg which one is not represented in ecg guys speed up which one is not represented in ecg quick 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 guys breathing will stop cessation means breathing will stop cease cease word that cessation word is from cease what is going to happen yes so obviously repolarization of atria is not there depolarization of atria p de uh, depolarization of ventricle q r s complex is there repolarization of ventricle the t wave the end of t wave will even shows the end of the systole but in that ecg repolarization of atria is not there next question for the multiplication of any alien species of dna in an organism for the multiplication of any alien species of dna in an organism what should be there what should be there right multiplication of any alien piece of dna in an organism it needs to be the part of chromosome linked at specific site it must be able to replicate itself by attaching to nucleus it needs to be incorporated in chromosome at any random site it must have its own machinery to replicate like virus so what should be the correct answer what should be the correct answer here yes jaldi quick what should be the correct answer here so it needs to be the part of chromosome linked at specific site what is that specific site the origin of replication site right so if we want any alien piece of dna to replicate in a particular organism it needs to be the part of its dna it needs to be the part of its genetic material right right and it needs to get attached near to the origin of replication site the next question refer to the given figure and choose the correct option for the x what is x there right which organism is basically x which organism is basically x which organism is basically x which organism is x just look at this particular flow chart female meiosis male mitosis what should be the correct answer 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 guys female will form the gametes by meiosis but male is forming it by mitosis so it means that male is what it means that male is haploid male is what male is haploid so obviously the correct answer is going to be honey bee right in the case of honey bee you see na female is diploid male is haploid why because male develops parthenogenetically male develops parthenogenetically next question histones are basic in nature reason histones are rich in the amino acid lysine and arginine histones are basic in uh, nature reason histones are rich in amino acid lysine and arginine so what should be the correct answer what should be the correct answer all of you speed up after this we have to go for the chemistry so guys start quickly start histones are basic in nature because histones are rich in amino acid lysine and arginine so we know that both are correct assertion and reason they are true histones are basic proteins plus charged because they are fully loaded with the uh, basic amino acid lysine and arginine and yes you could add one more thing here when you talk about the basic amino acids three examples are there that is hall histidine arginine lysine histidine arginine lysine histidine arginine lysine it is next question the second heartbeat that is dove it is associated with the closure of 
द सेकेंड हार्ट साउंड दैट इज डाव इट इज एसोसिएटेड विद द क्लोजर ऑफ येस बच्चे इट इज एसोसिएटेड विद द क्लोजर ऑफ द सेकेंड हार्ट साउंड डाव फर्स्ट इज लव second is dav so it is associated with the closure of semi lunar valve and if they will ask for the first heart sound it is associated with the closure of closure of atrioventricular valve it is associated with the closure of atrioventricular valve so this is what you need to keep in your head the next part which of the following pair is wrong uricotalic bird uriotalic insect a monotalic tadpole uriotalic elephant so which one is incorrect which one is incorrect see there is one question there is one student who is asking the same question again and again guys this is what you need to learn for your final paper also krish krish if you don't know the answer of one question leave that question and focus on the next question focus on the next question okay so what should be the correct answer here of course here the correct answer is uriotalic insect see you know that we a monotalism is there uricotalism is there ureotalism is there ureotalism means urea will be excreted but but when it comes to the insects they are uricotalic they are uricotalic right bachche they are not ureotalic ureotalic means urea they are excreting uricotalic uric acid so a female has two x chromosome one carrying allele for color blindness other for hemophilia let's say the condition is like this and this female marries to a color blind color blind firstly let's solve it okay so they are asking what is the percentage of offspring to get affected by both the disorder both are both are recessive isn't it both are recessive isn't it both are what both are recessive see is there any kind of lag i don't think so i don't think i don't think so guys is there any lag is there any lag so they are asking what is the percentage of offspring to get affected by both the disorder right so if you will look at this now so only this this genotype is again having both xe and xs so instead of using the word both of them will have uh, affected allele this is what both of them will have that defective allele this is what we can use right this is what we can use so on the basis of that we can say 25% that see if we draw this cross so you can see here because the father is what and female marries to a color blind man oh okay so here we can simply say one thing bachche that see this female is getting again both the x chromosome right so that is why 25% next question first discovered restriction endonucleus that always cut dna molecule at a particular point by recognizing a specific sequence of six base pair so what should be the answer directly ncert based statement it is yes bachche it's a directly ncert based statement guys quick quick so obviously it is going to be the hind 2 and it is going to produce the blunt ends but when you talk about the hind 3 hind 3 will produce sticky ends right hind 3 will produce sticky ends then next question in male cockroach the testes are located in yes only one question you are going to get from the uh, cockroach part right as per the previous paper trends now only one question from cockroach used to come in your final paper so tell me in male cockroach in male cockroach testes are located in it's very important in male cockroach testes testes are present in testes are present in of course it is going to be the c fourth fifth and sixth abdominal segment fourth fifth and sixth abdominal segment next question which set of contraceptive is expected to have similar mechanism of action the word is similar mechanism of action guys speed up what which set of contraceptive is expected to have similar mechanism of action similar same same right just look at all the options here same you need to answer that type of questions very wisely because you need to read each and every option 
okay so here the correct answer is going to be diaphragm condoms and cervical caps because all of them are basically the barrier methods but when you focus here copper t copper 7 multi load 375 and even the progesterone cert these three are copper releasing this one is hormone releasing right bachche and here we have the pills also the creams also here also the surgical method and barrier but when you talk about the b option all of them are the barrier methods okay next question a uh, fall in gfr activates whenever gfr is low whenever gfr is low glomerular filtration rate is low then it is going to activate what gfr is low gfr is low so obviously it is going to activate the juxta glomerular cells to release the renin remember remember low gfr a signal will be sent to the juxta glomerular apparatus that will have the juxta glomerular cells we even call them as granular cells so they will release the renin which will further act on the angiotensinogen here we are talking about the ras mechanism so it will become angiotensin 1 then 2 and then you know the entire sequence right next question an area in the brain which is associated with strong emotions an area in the brain which is associated with strong emotions the word is strong emotions the word is strong emotions kids yes speed up obviously it is going to be limbic system next question human eyeball consists of three layers and it encloses human eyeball consists of three layers and it encloses the word is three layers the word is three layers and that layers are going to enclose what obviously the lens aqueous humor and vitreous humor outermost fibrous coat which is complete then comes your vascular coat uvea again incomplete then comes your optic part so these three layers are going to enclose the lens the aqueous humor the vitreous humor any doubt any doubt next question the fate of piece of dna transferred into an organism depends upon the fate of piece of dna transferred into an organism depends upon obviously that piece of dna right if it will get transformed into the organism it needs to get incorporated with the genome of that recipient done bachche done bachche with the genome it needs to get incorporated done next question net primary productivity is given by the formula npp is given by the formula npp is given by the formula the word is npp net primary productivity you know na gpp gross primary productivity just like your pocket money npp is your savings so it is going to be gpp minus r r is the rate of respiration r is the rate of respiration come 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 oh you don't want to talk to them oh how bad you are okay the next question if one strand of dna has a nitrogenous base sequence as a t c t g what would be the complementary rna strand so while attempting such type of question what do you have to do you need to focus here here on the sequence and then what are they asking they are asking on the rna strand the word is rna strand right so what should be the correct answer guys ma'am what should be the correct answer here guys speed what should be the correct answer here ha lag is here basically see now they recognize you as lag right so guys rna a complementary to it will be u because we are talking about rna not dna a g then a then c so u a g a c so b is the answer b is the answer so which enzyme will be produced in a cell in which there is nonsense mutation in the lac y gene lac y gene is having the nonsense mutation means stop codons are introduced so you have to remember the sequence so what should be the correct answer here what should be the correct answer here so of course it is going to be beta galactosidase you know that it's v it's y it's a beta galactosidase permease transacetylase now in the y you are having non sense codone that is we are talking about the stop codones here so if y is having the stop codone then only we will get beta galactosidase only we will get beta galactosidase only right so it is the one which is going to break the lactose into glucose and galactose next question guys we are having you know some lag in our studio do you know that lag you please come here you please come here hey guys good morning what's up how are you all come to this side now you know on a right profile huh. <laughs> how what's are you up? everyone 
ऐसा बोल रहा हूँ Lag, 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 lag. <laughs> podcast was amazing. Yeah. See, podcast was amazing. That was particularly for all of you. So just listen to it properly. What have I said? And right? just close your eyes. Exactly. Right. Put the earphones and then listen to it. Right. Although he is very bad, but that podcast is very good. <laughs> Acha, you you continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I just finish, need finish, ten finish. more minutes. You yeah. then come. You please come then. I'm here only. Okay, you're not leaving. No. Oh. How can I leave you? Oh, you should leave me. See, <laughs> see, even they are telling lag is there, lag is there, lag is there. See, you are lag. अच्छा पानी पानी पिला दो, please. He will not be able to find out from where he has to get the water bottle. कहाँ से? ये बगल में. Right, so a man. Oh, oh, he is actually disturbing. Just a minute, ah. Huh? So next, next, next. Let's not break the flow, guys. Let's not break the flow. A man with a certain disease marries a normal woman. they have eight children okay three daughters guys just read the question carefully five son three daughters five sons all the daughters suffer from their father's disease okay but none of the son are affected which of the following modes of inheritance do you suggest for this disease it is easy it is easy bachche it is literally easy thank you so much yaar it is easy see daughters are affected only son is not affected means you know that from father son is going to get the y so father is not father is not inheriting y uh, father is not giving y so means the disorder the disorder is associated with the x chromosome and all the daughters are getting it so it is going to be x linked dominant Because only father is affected, mother is not affected. One X chromosome, one X chromosome having the defective allele is causing the disorder. So it is clear cut indicating that it is a dominant disorder. Is that? Yes, it is. Oh God. I'll teach you. So semi-conservative DNA replication was pr uh, proved by Meselson and Stahl in which DNA? Yes, in which DNA was made? In Meselson and Stahl experiment, DNA was maintained. Yes, guys, you know the answer quick. Quick. So obviously DNA was heavy using 15 NH4Cl that is ammonium chloride. And please mark this. It is the heavy isotope of nitrogen, not the radioactive isotope. Am I right? Which one? When it is 15 N, it is just the heavy isotope. It is not radioactive, hmm. right? Ha. So it is the heavy isotope of nitrogen, not the radioactive, right? But the next question, assertion, and reason based it is carbohydrate digestion mainly takes place in small intestine. The reason is pancreatic juice contains the enzyme lactase. pancreatic juice contains the enzyme lactase i think i have asked this, asked this question uh, for the third time yes for the third time so you know that when it comes to the pancreatic juice it does not contain the enzyme lactase lactase is present in your succus entericus that is your small intestinal juice right mm -hmm. bache carbohydrate digestion will take place in the small intestine only it is a fact so here we can say the assertion is true but the reason is false next question lungs do not collapse between breaths and some air always remain in the lungs which can never be expelled because which can never be expelled because you know the answer quickly answer it guys and do hit the like button do subscribe our channel let's make it 45k family you you bache in the 17th question no one will be affected with the disorder but i uh, modified that statement na i mentioned that let's say out of all the all the children right which one will have the defective allele for both the disorders so do not just focus on one do not just focus on one question right this is the common mistake that you people used to do in your final paper right if if you are not getting the answer of one question leave the question move to the next one move to the next what are you doing like you are a celebrity or something kyo i'll sit here jalwa i'll sit here finish up quickly you're bad lungs do not collapse in between because we know that we are having the ha there is negative intra plural pressure pulling at the lungs uh, uh, pulling at the lung walls the word is pulling not pushing if they will add push word here then it is incorrect statement it is incorrect statement it is pulling at the lung wall and obviously in the lungs we always have that dead air 
you know remember dead air She's that's what i'm dead mai marungi the maximum volume of air a person can breathe in after a forced expiration expiration forced expiration is there then we have to breathe in we have to breathe in yes what should be the correct answer here what should be the correct answer here guys increase your speed quick we you, you know we need more time in physics okay so so in the final paper also you have to finish the biology in you can say that 35 to 40 minutes with omr filling so <coughs> what should be the correct answer here it is obviously the now, vital capacity now you can understand how easy is bio bro the maximum bio, already answered it now in the following palindromic base sequence of dna which one can be cut easily by particular restriction enzyme what should be the correct answer here right in the following palindromic base sequence of dna which can be cut easily by particular restriction enzyme see bachche they are asking for the palindromic sequence so just look at all the sequences written here right so only this particular sequence gaatt c g a a t g a a t t c galat ho gaya galat right g a a t t c so it is the correct answer only so bachche this particular sequence is of eco r1 and this is going to form the sticky ends sticky ends and what is the sequence you have to remember it with the help of a trick like we have 3g 4g same way we have 5g network so g a a t t c right so it is going to be g a a t t c and another question is your restriction endonuclease it breaks the sugar phosphate backbone it breaks the sugar phosphate backbone next question statement 1 statement 2 decomposition is a process in which detritus is degraded into simpler substances by microbes decomposition is faster if the detritus is rich in lignin and chitin again easy again easy easy peasy lemon squeezy yes again easy so see you all can see bachche here we are having a uh, disturbing element distracting element but i am not getting distracted this is what you need to do in they, neat they final can, paper they can also see i'm just sitting it is just uh, she is only see, getting disturbed see, see, right see, see, i'm doing nothing see. see there will she be she wants a... to get disturbed so i can do nothing about it i'm right? telling I'm you the fact sitting. one day this thing is going to happen in front of camera na we all will be like this ek dusre ke baal noch rahe honge hum pakka theek hai so what should be the correct answer here so obviously here statement 1 is correct but statement 2 is incorrect because 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 decomposition is not faster if detritus is rich in lignin and chitin it will be slow it will be slow next question in oogenesis which cells are produced at the end of multiplication phase multiplication proliferative phase is there Plori proliferative phase is there so what will happen in oogenesis which cells are produced at the end of multiplication phase right so here the correct answer is going to be primary oocyte how bachche because initially you, what is going to happen the multiplication with the help of mitosis so oogonia is there so many oogonia they will divide 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 and divide right so it should be oogonia oogonia is not given here now you know that oogonia is going to grow it will form the primary oocyte which is diploid so that is why correct answer here is a that is why correct answer here is a next question section b only 15 questions are left and then we are going to start the chemistry we are going to start the chemistry then i'll distract this man okay so the next question mm -hmm. you wish aha uh -huh. grave disease is caused due to grave disease is caused due to grave disease is caused due to graves disease so it is because of the hyper secretion of the thyroid gland you know thyroid gland hyper secretion excessive secretion of thyroid hormones next question the maximum amount of co2 in human body is transported as again easy the maximum amount of co2 in the human body is transported as maximum amount of co2 maximum amount of co2 so obviously it is bicarbonate that is hco3 negative hco3 negative and always remember carbon dioxide is more soluble in blood in comparison to the oxygen but when you talk about the binding capacity or the affinity with the hemoglobin so carbon monoxide is having more affinity uh, with the hemoglobin in comparison to the oxygen remember that next question yes how many ova are released in the case of maternal twins and fraternal twins respectively give it a try I'll just guess the options, huh? Huh. Are all the options are almost similar? Wait. Exactly. Two, That two, type of things. One one. one huh. Two, two one. Wait. Um. I'll go with C. You're right. Are you sure? Yes, you're right. So when it is the maternal twin, only one, only one ova is required. Actually, what is happening here? 
monozygotic remember monozygotic twins and dizygotic so when it is a fraternal twin two two ova are there and obviously they will get fertilized individually separately and we will be having two zygote dizygotic twins here right dizygotic twins here next question mammals can thrive in antarctica as well as in sahara desert this is because we mammals can survive everywhere do you know no we are mammals yes i know oh, oh yesterday i told you so what should be the correct answer because we are the regulator so whenever you people feel disappointed always remember only 1% animals are only 1% organisms are regulator and we are among that 1% right mm, best right, way right. to Right, right. motivate ourselves next question during the process of respiration in human being the exchange of gases takes place in during the process of respiration in human being the exchange of gases take place in obviously the simplest question it is alveoli the primary site for exchange of gases right next question a cell in is in metaphase if a cell is in metaphase if a cell is in metaphase if guys you have to answer it then we are going to start with the chemistry and then the physics i'll go with c You are a cheater. I swear I did not see. Is it is it right? Yeah. Metaphase, you know na? Chromosomes are arranged on equatorial plate. They are arranged on equatorial plate like this and at that time we can even check their shape, we can even check their size and we can even calculate their number. So obviously C is the correct answer. Uh you know one student was saying ki he is just like principal. A teacher is teaching and he is observing. Wow. <laughs> Actually na he cannot sit alone outside na please teach yaar he cannot sit alone she's outside so, so he was like where is ambika okay okay she's in studio i'll annoying. sit there only i'll sit there annoying. only hai na so he was like that <laughs> read the following statement lymphocytes are most common agranulocytes platelet count is in between 1.5 to 3.5 lakh per mm of the blood when thrombokinase acts prothrombin is formed is it so thrombokinase is going to act it should form the thrombin universal donor of abo blood group system lacks nta obviously not even i have ha huh, obviously yes even i am having the ab blood group right so i have both the antigen my rbc is having both the antigen but in our plasma no antibody is present right so yes it will lack nta and ntb so according to you how many statements are correct two statements are correct here only like platelet count is in between okay universal donor okay okay so thrombokinase when it will act it will form thrombin right prothrombin is itself inactive na next question which of the following factor will not cause the okay. change in gene frequency shoot which of the following factor will not cause change in gene frequency oh, see. again it is correct yaar this is the are, are you serious <laughs> did i see the chats no they didn't even answer yet then how do you know I I have cracked. Matlab matlab you I are just no 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 you are just C C C C C I I'll, I'll tell them at the end how 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 I'm able to crack all these questions. I'll let you know at the end. Just just do it. Which of the following factor will not cause change in C? Not cause. Not cause. mutation gene flow genetic recombination actually this question is from your hardy wingber equilibrium where we consider few points like uh, there are some assumptions mutation should not be there there should be no no gene flow no gene migration recombination should not be there the mating should be random it should not be non random and the population should be large so when we consider the large population it will not cause any change in the gene frequency right so next a set of standards by which a community regulates its behavior and activities in relation to the biological word is termed as bioethic of course bioethic of course next question the presence of gill slits in the embryo of all the vertebrates supports the theory of gill slits are present in the embryos of all the vertebrates bache gill slits are present in the embryos of all the vertebrates i'll go with c again no tell me it's c again no it's d now <laughs> bache it's recapitulation do you remember ontogeny repeats phylogeny right do you remember this ontogeny repeats phylogeny it is the ontogeny that repeats phylogeny ontogeny developmental history phylogeny evolutionary history so it is basically repeating so the answer is recapitulation next question which one of the following terms would most correctly describe the relationship between the flight organs of the animals like locust bat swallow Uh, swallow and flying fish yes we are we are relating it like locust bat flying fish so obviously analogous organs why 
why because function is going to be same but the structure is not at all same right structure is not at all same function can be same you know locust jumping jumping flying fish pectoral girdle pectoral fin oh, sorry pectoral fin like this bats like this yeah. again the pectoral girdle mm -hmm. correct related they understand huh? which one of the following part of human brain has a center for controlling for control uh, controlling that uh, breathe quick 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 are yeah, ek minute between the flight organs but how can you relate it with the locust and even if you are talking about the bat or the flying fish in the case of bat when you talk about the wing basically it is the patagium it is not made up of feather right even in the case of flying fish if you talk about that extension that extension is of the pectoral fin here the function is same not the structure focus on locust as well locust is what it is an insect it is an insect it is not a chordate so we have to consider all the organisms given here so here obviously it is medulla oblongata the part of the hind brain so how to remember the hind brain so hind brain is like p c or m i need to study physics chemistry and maths pons veroli cerebellum and medulla oblongata hind brain it is next question in breeding is carried out in animal husbandry because 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 in breeding <coughs> breeding in same generation for 4 to 6 generation obviously it is going to increase the homozygosity but it can also cause in breeding depression which can be overcome with the help of outcrossing next question the recessive gene located on x chromosome in humans are always ha now guess the option c the word is recessive gene located on x chromosome it will be expressed in males because they have xy right none so the last question given diagram represent the hmm. components of transcription is it, unit is it logic gates no it's transcription unit right it is transcription unit so a b c last and d yeah it is the last question so a b c you know that a is the terminator hmm. it is c 3-5 no a is the promoter b is the terminator c is the coding uh, c is the template strand d is the coding strand so okay promoter terminator template strand coding strand so always remember template strand is having polarity 3 prime to 5 prime template strand when you talk about the coding strand this okay done so that's all we are done with the biology, biology. right see i told you now that i'll finish it in 1 hour 15 minute that's good that's good i like you the decrease speed. the speed huh, huh. मुझे पता था यही बोलने वाले पता मुझे यही पता था मुझे अकेली लड़की को ये लोग परेशान करते हैं अपने काम करवाते हैं अरे आई नो दैट आई एम स्मार्ट सो गाइस रेडी फॉर द केमिस्ट्री या टुडे यू एक्चुअली नीड माय हेल्प थैंक यू सो मच डायमेंशन वर नॉट चेंज गाइज रेडी फॉर दी नाउ वेयर इज आर गॉड ऑफ केमिस्ट्री ओ Now I'm damn sure she is going to disturb. I know that, right? No, today I will not because I know tomorrow they are having the But exam. But she cannot distract me anyway. I am not going to do that because I know tomorrow they are having the you. exam. <laughs> you are, you are. <laughs> Then why are you in my class? अच्छा हो गया. Just a minute, ना. You save for me. Is there any issue with internet? No, it's all cool. There is. Hmm? There is. No. Ah, uh, something is fishy. I don't know. Let me check. Let me check. Don't oh, get. I'll just. Hmm. It's perfect. But still, can you see that? You open the slides once again. I think. I'm telling you, there is a. Hmm. Now it's fine. Uh, open the slides again. Just refresh the mail first. Well, I have to teach her how to operate the mail and all. Yeah, I mean this is nonsense. Password to reshare. Password to reshare. Just a second. Guys, oh, do you have any doubt? See, 
एक मिनट एक मिनट सी सी जस्ट वॉच जस्ट लुक एट इट दैट्स ग्रेट वंडरफुल एक मिनट आई गेट हां 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 जस्ट अ मिनट हां जस्ट अ मिनट टीचर यू नो द नेम इज इंट इट So, guys, ready for chemistry? Ready for chemistry? Capto is also there. Oh wow! Capto is also there. Even I am here. See? Nobody is ready for physics, is it? <laughs> you, you can't. Arey, arey, arey. How much space you will occupy, ma'am? Uh, right, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up, warriors? Okay, looks so, so like. So ask them their mark, uh, marks in uh, zoology. And their see, marks in zoology, uh, full no. In, in one, biology, biology, one eighty, one eighty. That's them. it done. Three sixty out of three sixty. Seriously, huh. and see if you are like, na, then ma'am, there are few mistakes in questions or something. Be ready for that because NTA is going to do that. Yeah, NTA yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely yeah. going to. Definitely, do uh, you know what? I have a feeling that NTA people are also watching this uh, session. Yeah, and they'll be like, they are the one. They are the one. <laughs> Twenty <laughs> so is going to make the mistake, so be ready for that. <laughs> so they will ask incorrect question or options or even the answer. <laughs> correct, correct. There is only one session we hope that NTA doesn't see, and that is basically how to, uh, to guess. <laughs> please, so please I, don't see. Then NTA will be like, okay, please. these are the tricks. I'll do. Something. So people ready for the chemistry? No. Ready for the chemistry? Give no. me some fire signs. Give me some fire signs no. in the chats. Everybody, everybody. Everybody. Three fifty-five in biology. Everybody, quickly. Guys, after this, no, you have to sit and meditate. Okay, after the session, but till the end of the session, you're going to meditate towards the session. All right. So full focus, full concentration, with full josh, full energy. Do not try to give up at any point of time. Even if you find something which is scary, it's okay. We are there with you, the team Avengers. It's Guys, okay, do not. The team sir is here to scare you. <laughs> do not think of any consequences at this particular point of time. Just you have to enter the examination center like a boss and leave the examination center like the boss. Yes, That's all. Yes, exactly, yes. exactly, exactly. KGF. Like yeah. Rocky bye. <laughs> Rocky bye. Rocky bye. <laughs> Ex- do not think of any consequences. Just give your best. That's that's all what we want from you. Don't worry. We'll come back and we'll give you some motivation. Each and well. everyone is important. So have self belief. Exactly. Self belief is important. important. Yes. Most important thing. Right. Wonderful. Everyone Chalo. is unique. And I hope you guys have all subscribed to the channel. Yes. And thank yeah. you for making this family thirty eight point five. I'm pretty sure forty ke to I oh, think yeah, I before end of the session only. But let's make this family bigger, yeah. I think we should have an aim of fifty thousand subscribers by tomorrow night. Without, Yo. Without yeah. their support, we are nothing. We are, we without are their nothing. support, sir, we are nothing. We it's, are nothing. It's all mutual, and guys. It's all mutual. This channel is going to be one of the 
It's going to be the best. The top channel of the country. It's a carbon-carbon bond. Catenation property is required. Let's go. Let's go. You talk about symbiotic relationship. I know catenation, you know. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
Look at this particular question. A very simple and basic question this is, people. And I'm damn sure you can easily solve this one. So we are given with CUBR basically, right? We are given with CUBR. Its solubility is given to us. Its solubility is given to us. And we are supposed to just calculate the solubility product. Now you tell me how this CUBR will undergo dissociation. It will undergo dissociation as CU positive plus BR negative. This is how it will undergo dissociation. Let's assume its solubility is S. So this is also S. This is also S because the stoichiometric coefficients are 1 is to 1. If you want to write the expression for KSP, expression for KSP is going to be copper positive concentration raised power 1, BR negative concentration raised power 1. So I must say your KSP is going to be, this is S, this is S. So it's going to be S square and S value is given to you as per the question which is 2 into 10 raised power minus 4 whole raised power 2. So it's going to be 4 into 10 raised power minus 8. Is there any option like that? Yes, it's option A. And I can see majority has already come up with option A. Absolutely wonderful, guys. Absolutely wonderful. Expect the similar type of questions in the tomorrow's examination. Expect the similar sort of questions. Perfectly done. Moving on to one more question, guys. Looking at this particular question, carefully. Carefully look at the question. We are given with a reaction which is reversible in nature. The reaction is reversible in nature. Increase in the pressure will favor. Increase in the pressure will favor. So first of all, if you look at the reactant side, on reactant side, we have got 1 and 3. We have got 4 moles of reactants. On reactant side, we have got 4 moles in total. On product sides, we have got 2 moles. On product side, we have got 2 moles in total. 4 moles on reactant side, 2 moles on product side. So that means when this process is happening, when the forward reaction is happening, are the moles increasing or decreasing? I would say these gaseous moles are decreasing. If the moles are decreasing, that automatically tells you in the forward direction, pressure is decreasing. That means in the backward direction, pressure will be increasing. This is something which we concluded till now, right? This is something which we concluded. In the forward direction, moles are decreasing. That means pressure is decreasing. In the backward direction, moles are increasing. So pressure is increasing. Okay. Now, Increase in the pressure will favor. Now, if we increase the pressure, if we increase the pressure, equilibrium will try to decrease it, right? If we increase the pressure, equilibrium will try to decrease it. And in which direction pressure is decreasing? Forward direction. So, equilibrium will shift in the forward direction. That's all, right? Lee Chatler principle. Whatever you do to the system at equilibrium, equilibrium exactly does opposite of what you do. That's all. If you increase, if you try to increase the pressure, equilibrium will try to decrease it. If you try to decrease the pressure, equilibrium will try to increase it. Nothing else. Yes, wonderfully done. Moving on to one more question. Moving on to one more question. One more question from the equilibrium and expect this type of question from, particularly from chemical equilibrium. My dear students, in case of this particular question, we are given with a reaction and I'm writing the reaction here. Two times SO3 gas is in equilibrium with 2 times SO2 gas and with this SO2 gas, we have got O2 gas as well. Okay, this is the reaction first of all. Now, as per the question is concerned, initially, we are starting with 1 mole of reactant. We are starting with 1 mole of reactant. So, this has to be 0, this has to be 0. Now, at equilibrium, let's assume out of 1 mole of reactant, x moles got converted into products. So, I'll be left with 1 minus x moles of reactants at equilibrium. Since 2 moles gives 2 moles, so 1 mole gives 1, so x moles are going to give us x moles. Since 2 moles gives 1 mole, 1 gives 1 by 2, so x is going to give us x by 2. So I got to know the moles of each reactant and product present in the container at equilibrium. Right? Yes, I got to know the moles of each reactant and product present in the container at equilibrium. Very simple. Now, now, have a look. It's mentioned that at equilibrium 0 0.6 moles of SO2 are formed. So it's mentioned in the question that number of moles of SO2 formed at equilibrium, formed at equilibrium, that's equal to 0 0.6. But we know number of moles of SO2 formed at equilibrium, that's equal to x basically, right? So basically, we got the value of x. We got the value of x. If you got the value of x, so 1 minus x, 1 minus 0 0.6 comes out to be 0 0.4. So this is going to be 0 0.6. This will be 0 0.6 divided by 2. That is 0 0.3. So you got the moles of each reactant product present in the container at equilibrium. As simple as that. Now, my dear students, the volume of the system, the volume of the system is given to us as 1 liter. If I divide these moles by the total volume in liters, I got the concentration. So basically, 
concentration of all reactants and products at equilibrium I calculated. Now, I just need to find the value of Kc. So, write the expression for Kc. It's going to be concentration of SO2 at equilibrium raised power the stoichiometric coefficient 2 multiplied by concentration of O2 at equilibrium raised power stoichiometric coefficient that's 1 divided by concentration of SO3 at equilibrium raised power the stoichiometric coefficient that is 2. Now, look at the values. SO2 concentration. SO2 concentration at equilibrium, that's 0 0.6. So, 0 0.6 ka square. O2 concentration, that is 0 0.3 divided by SO3 concentration, that's 0 0.4, but raised power stoichiometric coefficient, that's 2. Now, it's a matter of calculation. Get it done and kill it, right? Perfect. Perfect, people. Perfect. One simple question from the chapter, chemical equilibrium. Right, so after solving, you'll be getting the final answer exactly as 0 0.68, which I could see majority of the students already did. Yes, wonderful. So let's move on to one more question, people. Let's move on to one more question. <clears throat> Let me see if you can solve this or not. A very simple and basic question again, this is which of the following, which of the following 0 0.1 molar solution will show maximum boiling point? will show maximum boiling point. So, you have got basically four solutions. You have got four solutions. Sodium chloride solution, copper chloride, magnesium sulfate, chromium sulfate. Now, all these four solutions have got same concentration. They have got same concentration. Now, you need to see. Now, you need to see. Out of the four solutions, which solution will have maximum boiling point? What do you think about this one? Quickly in the chats. What do you think about this one? Quickly in the chats. Quickly in the chats. Everyone. What do you think about this one? What do you think about this one? Do remember one simple thing. Do remember one simple thing. Since all these substances which we are given with, that substance which will produce maximum number of ions in the solution will have maximum boiling point. For example, you have got sodium chloride. Sodium chloride in the solution will produce Na positive and Cl negative. So, NaCl is producing basically two ions. It's producing two ions, right? Perfect. Similarly, you've got copper chloride, CuCl2, right? You've got copper chloride. It will get dissociated as Cu di positive plus two times Cl negative. So it's producing three ions. You've got magnesium sulfate, MgSO4. When it will get dissociated, it will get dissociated as Mg di positive plus SO4 di negative. So it's producing two ions. Then you have got chromium sulfate. Then you have got chromium sulfate. It's Cr2SO4 whole thrice. When it will get dissociated, it will get dissociated as 2 times Cr tri positive plus 3 times SO4 di negative. So 3 plus 2, it's producing 5 ions. So more the ions, more the ions solute is producing, more is going to be the boiling point of the resulting solution. So it's going to be option D, which will be the correct answer of this particular question. You have to see that species which gives more ions in the solution will have maximum boiling point. That's all. That's all, people. That's all. Moving on to one more question. Moving on to one more question. Okay. One more question from the chapter electrochemistry. One thing I'm telling you, last year, when you see the last year NEET paper, there were two questions asked from Kohlroy's law, from the chapter electrochemistry. So, this time, expect questions from Nernest equation. Right? Expect more questions from the honest equation. Yeah? Now have a look. Calculate the EMF. Calculate the EMF of the following cell at 25 degrees centigrade. Value of E0 cell is given. Right? We have to calculate EMF. EMF of this particular cell. So let me represent the cell again. It is M solid gives M di positive. Or let me not write it. It's already mentioned here. Right? These two lines over here, they represent a solid bridge. On the left side of the salt bridge, you always write the anode and at anode what happens? At anode oxidation takes place. And as you can see, M is changing into M di positive. So the reaction has to be M solid. It gives M di positive aqueous. With this, you'll be getting two electrons. This is the reaction taking place at anode. Similarly, if I write the reaction taking place at cathode, you know, at cathode reduction takes place. M di positive gives M. So it's going to be M di positive aqueous will be gaining two electrons and it will be getting converted into what? It will be getting converted into M solid. Perfect. Now, my dear students, one thing you need to remember. M gives M di positive. M gives M di positive. Its concentration is 10 raised power minus 2. So, I'm writing it over here. 
10 raised power minus 2 molar its concentration is. Its concentration is 10 raised power minus 4. So the concentration here is 10 raised power minus 4 molar. Now, I want you guys to add up these two reactions. When you add up these two reactions, two electrons, two electrons cancel, M solid, M solid cancel. So you will be left with M di positive aqueous with the concentration of 10 raised power minus 4 molar. It gives what? It gives M di positive aqueous with the concentration of how much? 10 raised power minus 2 molar. So this is basically the net reaction which we got. This is the net reaction. After getting the net reaction, if I ask you how many moles of electrons are exchanged, since two electrons are cancelled, so two moles of electrons are exchanged in the net cell reaction. If I ask you to calculate QC, reaction quotient, it's going to be concentration of M di positive, that's 10 raised power minus 2, divided by concentration of this M di positive, that's 10 raised power minus 4, the value comes out to be 10 raised power 2. Now, you just have to use the Nernest equation, that's all. You just have to use the Nernest equation. And Nernest equation says E cell is equal to E naught cell minus 0 0.0591. But they have mentioned over here to take it as 0 0.06. 0 0.06 divided by N, right? Then it's going to be log of QC. Perfect. Now, as per the equation, E naught cell is given to us as 4 volt. You can see it. It's given to us as 4 volt minus 0 0.06 divided by N value 2 log of QC and QC value is nothing. It's 10 raised power 2 log of M raised power N is N log M. So 2 comes to the front log 2 comes to the front log 10 is 1. So this and this got cancelled. So it's going to be finally 4 minus 0 0.06. The answer will be finally 3.94 volts. Let me know quickly in the chats if it is super duper clear to everyone. Write the reaction at anode, reaction at cathode, add them up, get the value of N, calculate QC, put it in the Nernest equation, get the EMF for the cell. That's all. Right? Everyone in the chats, quickly. Is it clear to everyone? Is it clear to everyone? One question for everyone. I'm, I'm damn sure you can easily solve this one. There is no need to solve this. You just need to, I mean, it's a memory-based question, I must say. Yeah? Quickly. <clears throat> quickly, quickly guys. The number of electrons that can be accommodated in the shell with n is equal to 4. Everyone should answer this question at least, yeah? Quickly. Maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated in a shell with n is equal to 4. Maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated in a shell from class 9th or even 8th you study this, right? Maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated in a shell that's given by 2n square. n over here is 4. So it's going to be 2 multiplied by 4 ka square. 4 ka square is 16. 16 multiplied by 2 is 32. So basically in your fourth shell, there will be maximum 32 electrons accommodated. A basic question, which is what you call as easy equation. And when you receive the paper, try to identify these sort of questions first and solve them. In the beginning itself, that's going to boost up your confidence for sure. Okay, that's going to boost up your confidence for sure. All right, people. One more question. Quickly in the chats. Quickly in the chats. The question is from chemical kinetics. As per the question is concerned, rate constant value is given to us. Rate constant of a reaction is given to us. We have to calculate half-life. But it's not mentioned anywhere whether the order of the reaction is zero, whether it's one, whether it's two. Now, how you are going to check it? How you are going to check it? How you are going to check it? Look at the rate constant unit, it's minute inverse. Rate constant unit is minute inverse, right? And minute inverse, if the rate constant unit is, that means the reaction has to be the first order. So the reaction is the first order, okay? And for the first order reactions, how do you calculate the half-life? T half is equal to 0 0.693 divided by K and it's just going to be 0 0.693 divided by K value is given to us as 0 0.69 into 10 raised power what? 10 raised power minus 2, right? But now it's going to be in minutes. Done and dusted. So this particular concentration which is given to us, it is given just to confuse you, nothing else. We do not need the concentration here. We just have to calculate the half-life and half-life for a first order reaction is 0 0.693 divided by K. So no need of this concentration here. It is just to confuse you, nothing else. Yeah, it is just to confuse you, nothing else. Perfect. Perfect, guys. So you should be easily solving this sort of equation from now onwards, right? So the answer of this particular equation will be finally, it will be 100 minutes, which you can convert into seconds, which is 6024 seconds. Done and dusted. Moving on to one more question quickly. 
द पी एच ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट जीरो जीरो वन मोलर एन एच ओएच सोल्यूशन इज ओके सो यू हैव गॉट जीरो पॉइंट जीरो 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 वन मोलर एन एच सोल्यूशन सो इफ आई ऑस्क यू वट इज द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ एन एच दैट्स गिवन टू अस कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ एन एच इज जस्ट टेन रेज पर माइंस थ्री मोलर इफ आई ऑस्क यू वट इज गोइंग बी द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ ओ एच नेगेटिव इट्स अगेन गोइंग बी टेन रेज पर माइंस थ्री मोलर इफ आई वॉन्ट यू गाइज टू कैलकुलेट द पी ओ एच पी स्टैंड फॉर माइनस लॉग माइनस लॉग ऑफ ओ एच नेगेटिव कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इट्स जस्ट माइनस लॉग ऑफ टेन रेज पर माइनस थ्री द वैल्यू कम्स ऑर बी थ्री दिस इज पी ओ एच एंड इफ यू कैलकुलेट द पी ओ एच At 25 degree centigrade, you must be knowing pH plus pOH. It's equal to 14. So I can calculate pH from here. 14 minus 3. That comes out to be 11. That's something which you were supposed to calculate. Done and dusted, right? Done and dusted. So you are given with NaOH basically. So you calculate the OH negative concentration because NaOH dissociated dissociates as Na positive plus OH negative. Stoichiometry is one is to one is to one. So 10 raised power minus 3 molar NaOH will give 10 raised power minus 3 molar OH negative, right? That's all. So calculate pOH first, then pH. Yeah. Moving on to one more question quickly. The question is from the chapter atomic structure, and expect this sort of a question again tomorrow. Assume that the radius of the first Bohr's orbit, the radius of the first Bohr's orbit of hydrogen, is 0.6 angstroms. The radius of the third Bohr's orbit of H e positive. So we are given with two single electron species, hydrogen and H e positive, right? Let me represent it with number one. Let me represent it with number two. If I ask you what is the atomic number of hydrogen, you'll say one. If I ask you what is the atomic number of helium, atomic number of helium, hydrogen helium, it's two. Perfect. Which shell number? Which shell number in case of hydrogen? It is the first Bohr's orbit. Which Bohr's orbit in case of H e positive? It's mentioned as third, right? What is the radius of the first Bohr's orbit of hydrogen? It's given to us as 0.6 angstroms, and this R2 is something which we need to calculate, right? So, what is the formula which we'll be using? What is the formula which we'll be using? You know, radius of nth Bohr's orbit. It's nothing. It's R naught n square divided by z, right? So, you can use the formula R1 divided by R2 is equal to n1 square divided by n2 square multiplied by z2 divided by z1. Now R1 value is 0.6 divided by R2. We have to calculate n1 ka square. That's one. N2 ka square, three ka square. That's nine. Z2 divided by Z1. Z2 is two, and Z1 uh, is one. Correct. So one equation, one unknown. It's done. 0.6 divided by R2 is equal to two divided by nine. Or you can calculate it like this. You can say R2 is equal. To, you can say R2 is equal to nine into 0.6. 9 into 0.6 divided by 2, right? This is 1. This will be 0.3. So it's going to be 2.7 angstroms. The value of R2. Is there any option as that? You got the final answer as 2.7 angstroms. 2.7 angstroms, right? And you are supposed to convert into picometers, and this is going to be the resulting answer, right? 2.7 angstroms will be 270 into 10 raised power minus 12 picometers. Simple and basic. Okay. Moving on, moving on to one more question <clears throat> from the chapter thermodynamics. Look at the question carefully. One mole of ideal gas, one mole of ideal gas is allowed to expand reversibly and adiabatically from a temperature of twenty-seven degrees centigrade. So, one mole of ideal gas, its temperature initially is kept twenty-seven degrees centigrade. That means three hundred Kelvin. Now, the gas is undergoing reversible adiabatic expansion. The work done is three kilojoules. Right, the gas is undergoing reversible adiabatic expansion. You know, during the expansion, work is done by the system. W value, as per sign convention, is taken to be negative. So W is taken as minus three thousand joules, basically. It's kilojoules. So minus minus shows that this is the case of expansion, right? And convert it in joules. What do we have to calculate? We have to calculate the final temperature of the gas. It's again a simple question. Have a look. One mole of ideal gas is undergoing reversible adiabatic expansion. The initial temperature of the gas was given as 300 Kelvin. Work done is equal to minus 3000 joules. We have to calculate the final temperature of the gas after the expansion is over. Now, people, you know, if you use the first law of thermodynamics, delta U is equal to Q plus W, right? Since it's adiabatic process, so Q value is zero. So Q value is zero. Delta U is nothing. That's N C V T2 minus T1. N C V T2 minus T1, right? N C V T two minus T one is equal W, is equal W. Now have a look. What is the value of N that's given to me? N value is given to me as one. C V value for the gas that's twenty joules, right? T two we have to calculate. 
T1 is given to us as 300 Kelvin is equal to W value that's also given to us as minus 3000 joules. So you just have a look one equation and one unknown one equation one unknown matter of calculation and done and dusted right one equation one unknown from this particular equation you can easily get the value of T2 that's something which you were supposed to calculate right simple and basic equation again this is and expect these sort of questions I'm telling you again and again so after solving finally T2 value you will get as 150 Kelvin okay so that's the final temperature of the gas all right one more question a 0.1 molal solution of an acid we have got an acid whose molality right acidic solution whose molality is 0.1 that is 4.5 percent ionized calculate the freezing point molecular weight of the acid is given kf is given now dear students have a look properly what i'm going to say let's say you have got the acid in this format hx how it will undergo dissociation h positive x negative right so first of all what do i have to calculate i have to calculate the freezing point of the solution if you have studied the depression in freezing point is equal to i multiplied by kf multiplied by molality right and depression in freezing point is basically freezing point of solvent minus the freezing point of solution minus the freezing point of solution is equal to Van Hoff factor multiplied by kf multiplied by molality now i have to calculate the Van Hoff factor of the acid first and how do you calculate the Van Hoff factor of the acid see from one particle of reactant you are getting two particles so n value here is two so calculate the Van Hoff factor now i is equal to one plus n minus one into alpha so i has to be equal to one plus n value that's two minus one alpha percentage dissociation is 4.5 so alpha has to be 4.5 divided by 100 right which will be 0 0.045 this is the value of alpha this is the value of alpha 0 0.045 so what is the value of i which i'll be getting 1.045 this is the Van Hoff factor which you calculated perfect in case of dissociation do remember in case of dissociation do remember i is equal to i is equal to 1 plus n minus 1 alpha and i is equal to 1.045 number one Number two, number two, since we are given with the aqueous solution, so freezing point of solvent, which is water, that's going to be zero. So it's going to be minus the freezing point of solution, which we have to calculate is equal to I value. We calculated already 1.045. KF value must be given to us. That's 1.86 multiplied by molality of the solution. That's 0 0.1. You just have a look from this particular equation, matter of calculation, calculate the freezing point of the solution. Okay, I'm sure you guys can easily solve this sort of equation if it comes okay one simple and basic question this is perfect all right moving on to one more question then let's have a look on one more question just a second just a second okay the root mean square speed the root mean square speed of the molecules of a diatomic gas so basically you have got a diatomic gas let's say it's a2 let's assume it's the root mean square speed is equal to u okay let's assume the molar mass of the gas is m let's say the molar mass of the gas is m perfect let's say the temperature of the gas i'm keeping as t now as per the question we are doubling the temperature of the gas we are doubling the temperature of the gas and the molecule dissociates into atoms it was a molecule in the beginning now when you increase its temperature when you double its temperature it gets converted into atomic form now let's assume it's new rms speed is v2 now if i ask you about its molar mass its molar mass now is going to be m divided by 2 temperature you have doubled so temperature is going to be 2 times t so we have to get the relation between u and new u and old u that's all new u and old u you have to get the relation and you must be knowing you must have studied your v rms is nothing that's under root of 3 rt divided by m under root of 3 rt divided by m correct so you can say v1 divided by v2 is equal to under root of t1 divided by t2 and this is going to be m2 divided by m1 this is a particular relation which we'll be using here this is a particular relation which we'll be using now v1 value is nothing that's u divided by v2 you have to calculate is equal to under root of t1 divided by t2 t1 value is t t2 value is 2 times t right then m2 by m1 m2 m2 is m by 2 and m1 is nothing that's m 
correct? Do a bit of calculation now. This TT got cancelled, MM got cancelled. So you got U divided by V2 is equal to under root of 1 by 4, which comes out to be 1 by 2. So new RMS is coming out to be 2 times the old RMS. This is the relation which you are supposed to get. New RMS is equal to 2 times the old RMS. So option C has to be the correct answer of this particular question. Okay. Perfectly done. Now let's move on to few questions from inorganic chemistry, something which you love, right? Perfect, because you don't have to solve here. It is just you have to answer it directly. So what do you think about this particular question? Quickly. What do you think about this particular question? Quickly. The correct order of increasing ionic radii. The correct order of increasing ionic radii. What do you think? Look at the options carefully. Look at the options carefully. All these species, they are isoelectronic species. They have got same number of electrons. They have got same number of electrons. So first of all, when you talk about the isoelectronic species, which have got same number of electrons, do remember one simple thing. More the atomic number, more the number of protons, more the nuclear charge, lesser the size. Lesser the size. That's all. That's all. This is the concept which you have to use. Quickly, let me know in the chats. Let me know in the chats now. Everyone. See, magnesium, its atomic number is 12, 11, 9, 8, 7. More the atomic number, more the protons, more the nuclear charge, lesser the size. Yeah? Done and dusted? Done and dusted? So, what is the final answer then? It has to be option A. That's all. That's all, guys. That's all. I'm moving on directly to one more question. What do you think about this one? The dipole moment is minimum in. The dipole moment is minimum in. There is only one species among the four which has got zero dipole moment. There is only one species among the four which has got zero dipole moment. That is BF3. Rest all the other species, they will be having certain dipole moments. This will have certain dipole moment. This will have. NF3 will have. BF3 is the only one whose net dipole moment is basically zero. Because all these bonds, they are placed at an angle of 120 degree. Due to which the net dipole moment of this particular species is zero. So, this is going to be non-polar in nature. This molecule overall is non-polar basically. Yes? All the students have given the correct answer. That's wonderful. So, if you give correct answer for this question, what do you think about this one then? What do you think about the other one? What do you think about the other one? Quickly. Which pair of molecules, which pair of molecules does not have identical structure? Which pair of molecules does not have identical structure? Anyone? Quickly in the chats. Which pair of molecules does not have identical structure? Which pair of molecules does not have identical structure? Quickly guys, quickly. Quickly, give it a try. It's an easy question. It's an easy kill question. He's, he's telling does not. Does not is the term. Does not is the term. See, people are saying A. How can A be the answer? I3 negative is linear. BF2 is also linear. So they, are, they have identical structure. Right? Okay, have a look. If you look at option C, basically, BF3 structure, every one of you would be knowing. BF3, right? Trigonal planar structure. Okay, this is the structure of your BR, BF3. Boron is forming three sigma bonds, right? There is no lone pair on boron. Steric number is sigma plus lone pair three. Hybridization is sp2, right? Hybridization is sp2. Now, look at this ICL3. Look at this ICL3. Iodine is the central atom. So, seven valence electrons. How many sigma bonds? Three sigma bonds. Seven valence electrons. Three have been utilized. So, four electrons will be left as such in the form of two lone pairs. So, there are two lone pairs basically. So, steric number is three plus two, five. Hybridization is sp3d. Right? Hybridization is sp3d. So, as per hybridization, what about the geometry? Geometry has to be trigonal bipyramidal. Geometry predicted through hybridization. That is trigonal bipyramidal. Type of the molecule, if you ask me, it's going to be AB3L2, AB3L2, and AB3L2 as per VSCPR. That is 
T-shaped. It's a T-shaped molecule. So these are different, right? Yes. Simple and basic question this is. Moving ahead. Moving ahead. So option C is the one basically which is going to be the correct answer of this particular question. Moving ahead. What do you think about this one? Quickly, quickly, quickly. Which pair among the following is colorless? These sort of questions, they frequently come in your exam. Which pair among the following is colorless? Quickly, everyone in the chats. Quickly in the chats, everyone, which pair among the following is colorless? Look at the first one, scandium tripositive. If you talk about the outermost configuration of scandium, that's 3D1, 4S2, right? But this is scandium tripositive, so you have to take three electrons out, two from here, one from here. It's going to be 3D0, 4S0 configuration. Now talk about zinc. If you talk about the outermost configuration of zinc, that is 3D10, 4S1, sorry, 3D10, 4S2, correct? But Zinc dipositive, take two electrons out, so it's just going to be 3D10, 3D10, 4S0, right? Now, my dear students, if you look at both these cases, there is there are zero D electrons, zero D electrons, and here, completely filled D orbitals, correct? Do you see the unpaired electrons anywhere? There are no unpaired electrons. If there are no unpaired electrons, that means there will be no DD transitions. If there are no DD transitions, that means this pair is going to be colorless. That's all. That means this pair is going to be colorless. Rest, rest, you can check the other options. You will find the unpaired electrons. And wherever you find the unpaired electrons, that's going to be colored. In short. Okay? Perfect. So do remember your D0, D10 configurations, these are going to be colorless. Perfect. Let me see. Let's have a look on one more question. Okay. Similar type of question. What do you think about this one? What do you think about this one? What do you think about this one? Quickly. CrO4 dinegative. Oxidation state of chromium here is plus 6. First of all, write the chromium configuration. It is 3D, 3D5, 4S1. Right? Cr plus 6 configuration will be take 6 electrons out. So it's going to be 3D0. 4 is 0, right? Is there any D electron here? No D electron. Cr2O7 die negative, again plus 6. Again plus 6, right? So D0 configuration. MnO4 die negative, oxidation state of manganese here is plus 6, right? If I talk about the outermost configuration of manganese, it is 3D5, 4 is 2. 3D5, 4 is 2. But write the configuration of manganese plus 6. So take 6 electrons out, 2 from here, 4 from here. It is 3D1 configuration. So it has got 1 D electron. MnO4 negative. MnO4 negative, oxidation state of manganese plus 7, again D0, again D0, this is D0, this is D0, this is D0, there is only one species which is D1, that means there is unpaired electron, if there is unpaired electron, there will be DD transitions, if there are DD transitions, at the same time unpaired electron, right, so it's going to be paramagnetic at the same time, it will have some magnetic moment, it will have some magnetic moment, right, done. Which of the following ions exhibits DD transition and paramagnetic? Only this is having D electron, yeah? So it will have D, it will show DD transitions, right? And since there is unpaired electron, so it's going to be, of course, paramagnetic at the same time. Okay, what do you think about this one? Quickly, in the chats, everyone should answer this one at least. Identify the wrongly matched pair. Wrongly matched pair. NH3 nitrogen has got one lone pair, three sigma bonds. It's trigonal pyramidal, that's correct. NH3, it's a very common molecule. I'm not going into the details right now. PCL5, PCL5 trigonal planar. Is that, is PCL5 trigonal planar? Is PCL5 trigonal planar, guys? Is PCL5 trigonal planar? Is PCL5 trigonal planar? Do you call this particular structure as trigonal planar? No, right? So absolutely, it's option two, which is the correct answer of the question. Rest, everyone is correctly matched. S of six, that's octahedral, right? Six sigma bonds, no lone pair. BCL2, that's linear. That's absolutely correct. Okay. All right. What about this one? Which of the following reactions is correct? Particular question directly taken from your NCRT. Copy, pasted. 
which of the following reaction is correct when you heat up li no3 what do you get few days back only hsbc taught you quickly which of the following reaction is correct directly copied and pasted from your ncrd people tell me in the chats what do you think what do you think when you heat up li no3 what do you get o2 gas so you get all the time right no2 you get and at the same time you get li2 yes and look at all the options it's option d which satisfies it okay so have a look on this one as well one more question on the screen the first ionization enthalpy the first ionization enthalpy of sodium magnesium silicon are given these are the first ionization enthalpies of sodium magnesium silicon we have to talk about the ionization energy of aluminum see guys sodium magnesium aluminum and silicon they belong to same period on moving from left to right generally ionization energy increases so what should be the expected order expected order should be this this has to be the expected order but if i ask you is this the actual order also no this is not the actual order you have to interchange these two you have to interchange these two so sodium now it's going to be aluminum now it's going to be magnesium then it's going to be silicon right this is the actual this is the actual ionization energy order this is the actual first ionization energy order reason many a times we have explained right partially filled outermost configuration completely filled outermost configuration to take electron out from here you have to give more energy right so this is the order so basically i must say aluminum should have more ionization energy than that of sodium and less than that of magnesium since magnesium has 737 so alu aluminum should be less than 737 it should be less than 737 so there is only one option which satisfies it which option c that's all right that's all that's all people okay look at this one how many times we have solved this sort of equation bond order which of these species will have highest bond order no 8 plus 7 it's a 15 electron species 7 6 13 1 14 it's a 14 electron species right uh just a second 7 7 plus 6 is 13 13 1 14 okay 7 plus 6 is it's a 13 electron species and this is 12 electron species correct correct one simple trick trick i gave you few days back only all the 14 electron species they will have bond order of 3 all the 15 electron species will have bond order of 2.5 all the 16 electron species will have bond order of 2 17 electron species will have bond order of 1.5 18 electron species will have bond order of 1 similarly 13 electron species will have bond order of 2.5 12 electron species will have bond order of 2 11 electron species will have bond order 1.5 and 10 electron species will have bond order 1 and do remember bond order that's directly proportional to bond strength directly proportional to bond dissociation energy inversely proportional to bond length this is something which can be asked anything can be asked out of these anything now 14 electron species its bond order is maximum right so this is going to be the answer done and dusted right perfect Perfect, guys. Now one more question. With that, HSP sir is going to come with the organic chemistry discussion and few more questions from inorganic. Correct order of spin-only magnetic moment. You have to calculate the spin-only magnetic moment, right? Formula is under root of n into n plus two Bohr magnetrons. This is the formula by means of which you calculate the spin magnetic moment. This n represents the number of unpaired electrons. Number of unpaired electrons. So basically, more the unpaired electrons. more is the spin magnetic moment value more the unpaired electrons more the spin magnetic moment now check one by one check one by one cobalt here is in plus 3 oxidation state cobalt here again is in plus 3 oxygen state here iron is in plus 3 oxygen state right now first of all let me write the outermost configuration of cobalt iron cobalt it is 3d7 4s2 3d7 4s2 but cobalt is in plus 3 oxidation state so you have to take three electrons out so cobalt tri pos 2's configuration will be 3d6 3d6 4s0 4p0 even 4d0 right now dear students i told you in the last session also whenever oxalate whenever oxalate or water is attached to cobalt tri pos 2 normally oxalate is considered as a weak field ligand but when it is attached to cobalt tri positive it behaves like a strong field ligand 
it behaves like a strong field ligand. So this is right now behaving like the strong field ligand. If it is behaving like the strong field ligand, it's going to cause a pairing of electrons. If it causes the pairing of electrons, there'll be no unpaired electron left. All these six electrons will get paired. All these six electrons will get paired. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right? There is no unpaired electron. Talk about this one. F negative is a weak field again. It is not going to cause any sort of pairing. It's not going to cause any sort of pairing. Right? So, D6 will have. So, if you talk about cobalt tri-positive in presence of weak field. Right? So, how many unpaired electrons will be there then? There will be four unpaired electrons. It is 3D6. No pairing. So, there are four unpaired electrons here. There are four unpaired electrons here. Similarly, Fe tri-positive. Iron. 3D6, 4S2. 3D6, 4S2. Iron tri-positive. That means 3D5. 3D5. Weak field ligand. No pairing. So, five unpaired electrons here. So, five unpaired electrons here. Four here and zero here. More than unpaired electrons. More the paramagnetism. Right? More the spin magnetic moment. So, what do you think should be the answer of this question? Correct order of spin only magnetic moment. So, spin only magnetic moment will be maximum for what? Fe F6 tri negative, followed by Co F6 tri negative, followed by this. Right? Do remember these sort of questions as well. Okay? Perfect, guys. Now it's going to be HSP, sir, who is going to come up and solve the questions from here. Okay? <laughs> so, guys. Uh, so finally, our journey is almost coming to an end for the NEET 2023. Okay. So just one thing, one thing keep in mind, please and please at this particular point of time, see majority of the students will be anxious uh, right now. They'll be under massive dis uh, depression, right? We know it, but you are not going to be among those. Just one thing which you need to remember, do not think of the consequences at all. Do not think what is going to happen. What's going to happen after this? What's going to happen after that? Do not think at all, right? Okay, just enter the examination hall. Take the paper. Give at least 5 to 10 minutes for the complete paper. Have a complete overview of the paper. When you give 5 to 10 minutes to the paper completely, you will find almost like 10 to 20 questions which will be easy kill questions, right? Which you have to do in those 5 to 10 minutes. That is going to boost up your confidence, right? Do not look around how peop what people are doing in the examination hall. If you get stuck in any question in between, leave, their qu leave that question there only. Move to the next one. That question should not affect you at all. That question should not affect you at all. If you get stuck in between, in some question by chance, right? Leave that there only. Just move to the next one, right? Just delete the memory of the last question where you got stuck and follow the next one, follow the next one, okay? Try to start with the biology first. Try to complete the biology within 40 minutes. Within 40 minutes, try to complete it. Then go for your chemistry. And at the end, give proper time to your physics because all the subjects are equally important, guys. Right? And I'm damn sure you guys can. You have stayed with us for 10-hour marathons, guys. 12-hour marathons, 13-hour marathons. So, you have that patience. I know that. You can do it. And you will do it for sure. Like, we are super confident on your behalf. Right? So have that confidence level boosted up. Okay? Just be geared up properly. Have proper sleep tonight. Just sleep for minimum 8 hours tonight. Right? Wake up in the morning in such a way that you remain energetic during the examination duration. Your examination will start at 2, 2 to 5.30, right? Something around that. So you have to be super energetic. Your mind should be highly, highly active in that duration basically. So have proper sleep tonight. Sleep for 10 hours if you want. Do not, do not do the revisions now. It's done. Right? Sleep early tonight. Do not do the revisions at all. Eat healthy tonight. Eat veg vegetables. Do not go for chicken, mutton tonight. Okay? Eat vegetables. Have proper water. Okay? Take care again. God bless you all. Tomorrow, right after your examination, we'll be the first ones here, live with the paper discussion. So do send me the question paper right after your session on my telegram. Right? Again, wishing you all the luck. It was a great journey. It was no doubt a small journey basically because we started this channel like few days back only. It was a very, I mean, we did not get much time to train you, but whatever we could, we have did. Have some water. Whatever we could, we did. Keep yourself hydrated, kids. Have some fruits. <clears throat>
while you are solving some questions, all these questions, keep yourself hydrated, kids, with this liquid H2O. Hmm. Yes, and again, I will be praying that you all fall into your dream college. And you will for sure, right? Just believe in you. All our blessings are with you. It's 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 with you. Okay, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to ask us for it. Right? They are. I mean, without you, we guys are nothing. You know it, right? So your results actually will be our results. Perfect. We are always praying to God that Almighty God bless you with all happiness, prosperity and the best rank, best government seat. Exactly. So that's what. Your results are going to be our results. Yes. That's that's how, I mean, if you guys go into your college, if you get good ranks, that's how we are going to like yes. talk publicly to people. This is our student, right? We have we have taught this guy, that guy. Your success is our success. Our success. Absolutely. We are nothing without you. I told you in the beginning itself. It's all mutual, right? Okay? It's no it's not one way all the time. It's it's all the time the two way. Perfect? So I won't take a lot of your time. No need to get emotional or something. Okay? HSP sir. Yes, yes. Very good afternoon. All dear students. Wanakam. Sastrikal. Namaskaram. Wanakam. Hello guys, I'll see you tomorrow, right? Right after your examination, I'll be here. Okay, do send me your question paper at an earliest so that we can start the paper discussion right after your examination. Okay? Chalo, take care. God bless you all. Bye-bye. <coughs>
chloride you can see kids this boron is having three electrons in the outermost orbit one two three and three electrons of fluorine one two three so it is having only six electrons only six electrons in the valence shell valence shell it is having only six electrons so this borons Borons one orbital that is pure p orbital is there. This orbital is vacant. This is vacant and this is being 2p vacant orbital. You can see very well vacant orbital and fluorine is having lone pair. Fluorine is having lone pair in 2p. So, what do you think? This fluorine is also having lone pair. This fluorine is also having lone pair. So, all the fluorines are with 2p. So, what type of back bonding is going to take place? 2p is donating. This is donor 1 and this is gainer. So, 2p pi, 2p pi back bonding. Back bonding is also known as 2 atom resonance. You can also say this is being 2 atom resonance, 2 atom resonance. So, kids, this is the most stable because it is stabilized by 2 p pi, 2 p pi. So, I would like to say in fluorine BF3, 2 p pi, 2 p pi, it is having 2 p pi, 2 p pi. This is having 2 p pi because we know that fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, this is your second, third, fourth and fifth period. So, 2p, 3p, 2p, 4p, 2p, 5p. Two p, five p. Now, see kids, one mistake is done by most of the students. They are frequently doing one mistake. Now, if you see the minus i effect, so remember that do not see over here minus i effect because resonance or back bonding, back bonding is more dominating than minus i effect. So, do not go for minus i effect otherwise your answer will get wrong. If you are applying minus i effect then your answer will get wrong. So, see the back bonding this is most stabilized. This is most stabilized. So, less requirement of electron is there, less requirement of electron is there. So, this is you can say not that much BF3 is not that much acidic in nature. So, who is going to be most acidic in nature? So, definitely Bi3 is maximum electron deficient, maximum electron deficient and electron deficient means stronger Lewis acid, stronger Lewis acid, stronger Lewis acid. So, strongest Lewis acid is Bi3, then Br3, then Cl3, then F3, third will be the correct answer. I can see that most of the students are getting C to be the correct answer and let me check it that your answer is right or wrong kids. Definitely your answer is right. Those who got the correct answer, show me the thumbs up in the chat section. Now, which of the following represents the correct order of metallic character? Now, see metallic character. There is potassium. Potassium is over here. Hydrogen, lithium, leave hydrogen, lithium, sodium and potassium. Potassium on moving down the group, metallic character increases. Metallic character increases. Metallic character increases. Now, see sulfur, sulfur is silicon is there, silicon you can see carbon silicon, silicon is over here non-metallic, non-metallic kits. So, it has to start from potassium, that potassium will be maximum and silicon will be at the last. Can you see any option like this, metallic character like this, is any option given over there? Any option can you see starting from potassium and ending with silicon, potassium at the first number and silicon at the last number. So, this is going to be the correct answer fourth. Yes, everyone got it. Kids are you able to understand those who are getting the correct answer do let me know with the help of thumbs up. Yes, if you answer those who are getting the correct answer I want to see that whether answer is right or wrong. Yes, do let me know in the chat section. 
organic chemistry. So, we are going to start with organic chemistry. Is everyone ready? Is everyone ready? So, first question reaction of propana propanamide. Propanamide is like this this is your CH3, CH2, CONH2. This is being your propanamide. Propanamide. This is your propanamide. How many carbons are there in the propanamide? C2 it everyone. 1, 2, 3. So, methane, ethane, propane, propanamide with Br2KOH. Br2KOH, which reaction they are talking about? They are talking of Hoffman bromamide degradation. Hoffman bromamide, bromamide degradation reaction. That means in this reaction, there is shortening of the chain and one carbon gets decreased. One carbon decreases, that means this will go away. This will go away. What is left? CH3, CH2, NH2, NH2. So, this is your answer. Anyway, it is given. It is ethanamine or you can say ethylamine. Ethanamine, this ethanamine is the IUPAC name and ethyl amine, ethyl amine is the general name or trivial name. So, propane nitrile, no, ethyl nitrile, no, ethyl amine, yes, and this propyl, no, it can't be the answer. So, I can see majority of these students are getting the correct answer. That's really awesome. That's really awesome. Your answer is absolutely correct. Now, Lucas test, everyone we know that Lucas test, kids, what is Lucas test? Lucas Reagent is equimolar solution of equimolar solution of concentrated HCl plus anhydrous ZnCl2 and this is used for distinguishing alcohols. Alcohols 3 degree alcohol gets turbidity immediately, then 2 degree, then 1 degree. So, definitely the answer is going to be alcohol. Phenol is not the correct answer. This is not the correct. So, first is the correct answer. Everyone's this question was super easy. <laughs> easy, lemon squeezy, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Done and dusted. So, alcohol is the correct answer. Now, the most suitable reason. Oh, great. Primary alcohol is converting to aldehyde. Kids, this is your primary alcohol and this is converting into aldehyde. So, do let me know it is the easiest question given in NCRT, old NCRT it is given on page number 332 and new NCRT it is given on page number 340, 340. Do let me know what is your answer. What is your answer everyone, everyone? Yay! Absolutely correct. D is the correct answer. PCC, this is being MOA. Mild oxidizing agent, mild oxidizing agent, mild oxidizing agent because rest of others, this, this, this is what? This is being SOA, strong oxidizing agent, strong oxidizing agent. They will convert this primary alcohol, this SOA will convert primary alcohol to acid, directly to acid, R-C-O-O-H. So, they can't be the answer. CRO3, if I talk about CRO3, if CRO3 is anhydrous, if I talk about CRO3 kids, CRO3 anhydrous is MOA, anhydrous is MOA, mild oxidizing agent and CRO3 hydrated, aqueous, it is being SOA. But nothing is given over. Out of these two, the best yield is given by PCC. PCC gives best yield. Best yield is given by PCC. Kids, CRO3, we are taking CRO3 anhydrous. That is also going to do the same work that will act as MOA. But for the best yield, PCC is required. So, PC is going to be the correct answer. Another question, the final product of the reaction, this is phenol, this is your phenol or you can call it carbolic acid, carbolic acid. Kids, I want to see the answer. 
chloroform and NaOH, chloroform and NaOH, they are going to produce dichlorocarbene CCl2, the actual electrophile. The actual electrophile. So, what is the answer? Which reaction? Let me give you a hint. This reaction is Riemer Tiemann reaction. Riemer Tiemann reaction kits. Riemer Tiemann reaction. So, what is the answer? Everyone, D is most of the students are going with D. 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 C. Chloroform is there, kids. Remember that chloroform is given, CCL4 is not given. So, the answer will be A, salicylaldehyde. This is your salicylaldehyde. Kids, if CCL4 is given, CCL4 KOH is given, then you will get salicylic acid because here chloroform. So, definitely answer is A. A is the correct answer. Few students have done the mistake. They are saying that salicylic acid Kids, do remember if phenol is reacting with phenol is reacting with CCl4 KOH, then the answer will be salicylic acid. Then the answer is going to be salicylic acid. But here chloroform is given, so chloroform will give you salicylaldehyde only. Okay, is it clear to all of you? So. Once it is clear, do let me know in the chat section. This is clear to all of you. Yes, another question. Which of the following is most stable carbocation? Most stable carbocation. See, first of all, we have to see resonance. Then we have to see hyperconjugation. Then we have to see inductive effect. And then we are supposed to see percentage of S character. What trick I have told you, kids? I have given you the one trick that is Rahis. Rahis. So try to apply this Rahis trick. No resonance. No one is having resonance. No entity is with resonance. So let us go for hyperconjugation. This is having zero alpha hydrogen atoms. This is having C. 2 alpha hydrogen atoms. This is having C, 3 and 3, 6 alpha hydrogen atoms and this is having 3, 3, 6, 3, 9, 9 alpha hydrogen atoms. So, what do you think which is being most stable? Most stable, they have asked most stable. What is the answer? What is the answer? D is the correct answer. That is really awesome. That is really awesome. D is the correct answer. Now, really a good question. Read it out properly, kids. Read it out properly. It's really fantastic question. What's the answer you are going to give? Do let me know. See everyone, nitration of aniline in strong acidic medium also gives meta nitro aniline. Let me tell you, when we are doing nitration, when we are dealing with nitration, so we are going to take aniline, we will take aniline, we will take HNO3, we will take H2SO4. Kids, let me tell you very important thing, this benzene will act as nucleophile, nucleophile. This NH2 group is responsible for acting as base, base. Now, remember one thing, whenever there are two types of reactions, electrophile nucleophilic reaction and acid base reaction who is going to get preference out of these two type of reactions one is electrophilic and nucleophilic and one is being acid base neutralization who is going to get preference kids which reaction is being fast acid base neutralization do let me know which reaction is going to be the fast reaction. Do remember this will get preference dominating reaction. This is your dominating reaction, dominating reaction, kids, dominating reaction. So, this H2SO4 will release proton. It is going to release proton, kids, and this proton will attack on HNO3 as well as aniline. Let me tell you, this proton is going to attack on both of these things. See everyone, 
this is your aniline C six H five NH two. This is being weak base, weak base, and H two SO four is being strong acid, strong acid. Now acid base neutralization will take place and reaction will be reversible. Acid base neutralization, acid base neutralization will take place because this acid is being this acid is strong but base is weak so reaction will be reversible this is being nh3 plus known as anilinium ion so aniline as well as anilinium ion both are present this aniline is ortho para directing and this is meta director meta director kids let me see what is your answer in the chat section. I think everyone is able to understand what is your answer. So, in spite of certain natural group always go to only meta position in electrophilic substitution reaction amino groups. In acidic medium, aniline is present as anilinium ion. Aniline is present as anilinium as well as aniline both. Both. So, I think this is the best option, third option is the best option, third option is going to be the best option. Let me see to it, yes, but remember that aniline is present not only as aniline, not only as anilinium, both are present and that is why, that is why whenever you are going to deal with nitration of aniline, whenever you are going to deal with nitration of aniline, it is given in your NCRT page number 394, 394 old NCRT, old NCRT. Now, if you are doing the nitration, this is really very, very important kids. Now, you are going to deal with nitration, you will get three types of products. You will get three types of products, aniline, NO2, para 1 is 51 percent, meta 1 is Meta 1 is 47 percent, 47 percent and ortho 1 is just 2 percent. You can check your NCRT. This is really very, very important question. Agreed everyone? That is why this aniline is para 1. Just a second kids. Okay, kids, you got it. Everyone got it. Next, which of the following is aromatic? Give me the answer. Let me know the answer. Everyone, which of the following is aromatic? See, it is sp3. This can't be the answer. This is sp3, can't be the answer. This is sp3, can't be the answer. And this is C1, 2, 3, 4. 5 and 6 and it is planar, planar as well as 6 electrons, so it is aromatic. B is going to be the correct answer. Now, another question, this is really important question I want to see. I would like to see the answer everyone, everyone, what is the answer? Yes, let me see in the chat box what answer you are going to get. Most of the students are going for B or A. So, how to do it? How to do it? C, thermo setting, elastomer, fiber, thermoplastic polymer. So, if you know any polymer, you can give the correct answer. Thermo setting polymer, you know thermo setting polymer or you know fiber, nylon fiber, caroline, caroline, polystyrene, polyester, neoprene, neoprene you know that is having the weakest bond, neoprene is having the weakest bond. So, most of the students are getting the correct answer A, elastomeric, elastomeric is fourth, neoprene is the weakest bond, elastomeric example is buna S, buna N and neoprene, weakest force of attraction, weakest, weakest force of attraction. So, only by seeing the elastomer, you will get the answer, correct answer. See, students, 
it is clear to all of you another question now this is forming this compound how will you achieve it nitro first convert this nitro first convert this nitro into nh2 into nh2 see to it how will you convert this nitro into nh2 by reduction reduction you are supposed to do the reduction how will you carry out the reduction this reduction can be carried out in presence of tin and hcl tin and hcl or iron hcl iron hcl then this nh2 can be converted into diazonium diazonium it can be converted into diazonium n2cl how to do that nano2 hcl nano2 hcl and then you can use any of these h3po2 or ethyl alcohol or ethyl alcohol so can you see the reagent iron br2 what do you think is this the answer this or this or this how to do it now before that bromination is also there gets bromination is also there how to put bromine because this is just the removal of an o2 group i have removed an o2 group but how to substitute bromine at this position gets bromine at this position once you do the reduction once you do the reduction this is having lone pair so before reacting with this you have to carry out bromination 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 must be done so what's the answer first this then this then this then this so can you see third is the correct answer everyone got the answer third is the correct answer yes another question so this is the explanation see reduction then bromination then diazotization diazotization this is bromination this is re reduction reduction kids okay another question the most stable carbocation for the following is oh i think you have seen the answer so see kids the most stable carbocation for the following is this is positive charge at this place here the positive charge at this place if this is doing resonance see if it's coming over here this pi bond is coming over here you will get plus charge at this place if this is coming at this place you will get plus charge over here and the plus charge over here it is having lone pair it will do back bonding 2p pi 2p pi back bonding so this is stabilized by back bonding otherwise this plus charge is putting minus i so what do you think which is going to be the most stable kids which is going to be the most stable the most stable carbocation for the following is yes everyone what do you think which is the most stable the positive charge at this position the positive charge at this position it will do resonance it will come over here the positive charge at this position if it is doing resonance it will come at this place it will come at this place so what do you think so this is going to be the let me check it out this is plus charge over here this is doing resonance d is given if this is doing resonance plus charge will come at this place and then the plus charge it is not resonance it is not stabilized by back bonding but yes it is doing resonance from here to here extended resonance let me check it out extended resonance this is also having extended resonance this is having cross conjugation this can't be the answer and this is having resonance from here to here but this compound is having then it is doing resonance the plus charge come here it will do resonance from here to here so it is having extra resonance so c is supposed to be the correct answer this is going to be the correct answer kids this is having extra resonance see if i draw the resonating structure for it the plus charge first it will come over here then the plus charge will come over here and this will do back bonding it is it is going to stabilized by back bonding kids 
सो एक्स्ट्रा रेजोनेंस इज देयर एक्स्ट्रा रेजोनेंस इज देयर किड्स दिस इज हैविंग बैक बॉन्डिंग स्टेबिलाईजेशन एक्स्ट्रा स्टेबिलाईजेशन बाई टू पी पाई टू पी पाई बैक बॉन्डिंग किड्स हैव यू गॉट इट दिस इज नॉट गोइंग टू द करेक्ट आंसर दैट इज द आंसर ओके डी डी इज गिवेन फोर्थ सी ओ राइट 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 वॉट आई एम सींग दिस इज द आंसर दिस इज द आंसर सी वेर सी इज रिटर्न सी इट्स डी इज रिटर्न ओवर देयर एंड दिस इज सी सो सी इज गोइंग टू बी द करेक्ट आंसर you got it kids are you able to understand this is going to be the correct answer is it clear to all of you this is not the answer that is the answer once it is clear do let me know everyone do let me know that this is going to be the correct answer now which i mean among the following will answer possibly the carvalamin test means which is going to give carvalamin test which is going to give कार बायलामिन टेस्ट गेट्स कार बायलामिन टेस्ट पॉजिटिव कार बायलामिन टेस्ट मीन विच वन इज गोइंग टू सो कार बायलामिन टेस्ट इज गिवन बाई वन डिग्री अमीन प्राइमरी अमीन दे आर गोइंग टू गिव कार बायलामिन टेस्ट प्राइमरी अमीन वेदर दे आर एलिफेटिक और दे आर एरोमेटिक एलिफेटिक एज वेल एज एरोमेटिक so this is 2 degree i mean this can't be the answer 2 degree i mean this is your 1 degree i mean this is your 2 degree i mean can't be the answer this is your 3 degree i mean can't be the answer so what's the answer what answer you're going to get kids do let me know b is going to be the correct answer fantastic really awesome b is the correct answer i can see in the chat box everyone is getting the correct answer that's really awesome another question Ease of nucleophilic addition reaction. They are talking about nucleophilic addition reaction. N A R, N A R. People, let me make it very clear. This is directly proportion to magnitude of positive charge. Magnitude of positive charge, and inversely proportional to steric hindrance on carbonyl carbon. on carbonyl carbon so see to it kids here is positive charge but this positive charge is doing resonance with the benzene this positive charge is doing resonance with the benzene agreed stabilized by resonance so its reactivity will get decreased reactivity will get decreased will get decreased so see this is positive charge and this is providing electron and from acetone you can see both are providing electron so maximum reactive is this aldehyde generally generally aldehydes are more reactive generally aldehydes are more reactive because least steric hindrance you can see very clearly it is having least steric hindrance least steric hindrance at maximum charge maximum positive charge so what is the order most reactive is second then third and then first see to it any option is given for the reactivity order like this reactivity order reactivity 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 b is the correct answer b is the correct answer okay now another question kids the geometrical isomerism is shown by geometrical isomerism shown by see for geometrical isomerism the atoms set as they should be different if this is x this should be y if this is c or you can say x it can be y or it can be something else they should be different different and they should be different so here you can see they are same here you can see they are same here you can see they are same cl2 they are same so what you can see here one is hydrogen one is chlorine and this side methyl is there and there is no methyl these are different 
and they are also different. So, what is the answer you are going to get? Let us do let me know D is the correct answer that is really fantastic. Another question which of the following reagents cannot be used for the following conversion nitro to aniline this is being reduction this is being reduction reduction 10 HCl will do it LILH4 will do it FEHCl will do it. So, what is the answer? This is going to do this reduction, this is going to do this reduction. So, what is the answer? So, see everyone LILH4 because the electrons pi bond is in conjugation with benzene is going to affect double bond also. Whenever, whenever double bond is in conjugation, double bond is in conjugation LILH4 is going to affect it and one more thing it will this LILH4 will produce over here a compound like this along with that it is going to produce a compound like this also in minor amount but yes it is going to produce this compound also. So, this is not going to give aniline do remember this is really awesome question it is not given an NCRT this question is not given an NCRT not given an NCRT it is very good question but not given in NCERT this is given in LG Vade this is taken from LG Vade one book is there LG Vade so it is missing in NCRT but really once it has been asked in an NEET exam in this has been asked this question has been asked once in any IMS exam. If it is clear to all of you, do let me know in the chat section. Show me the thumbs up if this question is clear to all of you kids. Okay. So, now we are going to deal with physics. Lindlar's catalyst. No, no, it is not Lindlar's catalyst. It is not Lindlar's catalyst. Lindlar's catalyst is Lind. Lars catalyst is H2 PDC. This is Lindlar's catalyst. Kids, it is given in NCRT. Lindlar's catalyst is H2 PDC. It is not Lindlar's catalyst. Hydrogen is missing over there. Hydrogen is missing over there. Or you can say Lindlar's catalyst H2 PDC boiling xylene. Cunolin, barium sulfate. So, kids, sir, how is D possible? D, see, this is going to do the reduction, kids. Palladium carbon can do the reduction. Steric question, steric hindrance question. Steric hindrance question is like this, kids. See to it whenever we are going to deal with nucleophilic nucleophilic addition reaction and this reaction is shown by generally aldehyde and ketones shown by aldehyde and ketones. So, aldehyde and ketones. So, I would like to say that it is directly proportional to magnitude of positive charge on carbonyl carbon and inversely proportional to a steric hindrance. on carbonyl carbon. So, the order is like this most reactive is formaldehyde this is most reactive than acetaldehyde then acetone then acetophenone. get C to it all they are having positive charge on carbonyl carbon all they are having positive charge on carbonyl carbon you can see to it 
this hydrogen is neither electron donating nor electron withdrawing so this is the first member which is gaseous gaseous and 40 percent aqueous solution is known as formalin biological specimens are stored in, in formalin only this is the most reactive see least steric hindrance over here least steric hindrance and maximum charge maximum charge maximum positive charge you can see now it is donating electrons so charge is getting decreased and even a steric hindrance steric hindrance is also increasing and charge is getting decreased steric hindrance is increasing so reactivity is decreasing reactivity is decreasing now this is supplying 2 plus i this is plus i this is also plus i from both the sides plus i effect is operating so steric hindrance is increasing and reactivity is decreasing reactivity is decreasing now see this this plus charge is doing resonance doing resonance doing resonance so least reactive is it clear to all of you so let me call your captor sir just a second kids so any doubt is left kids do let me know in the chat section each and everything is clear or any doubt is left kids do let me know in the chat section is everything clear easy peasy lemon squeezy are you able to understand each and everything now i'm i'm going to call your captor sir captor sir is going to come okay kids any doubt is left do let me know everyone do let me know any question you are unable to understand anything which is left do let me know your sir is going to come within just fraction of seconds kids do let me know any concept is left that you yes you want to ask is there any doubt any question any concept yes okay let me give you one question let me give you one question from IUPAC try to do this question question from IUPAC okay let me give you one conversion question one conversion question try to understand try to give the answer of this question let me see to it who is going to give answer of this question one conversion question see to it everyone I am going to start with benzene benzene's nitration concentrated HNO3 concentrated H2SO4 is giving out A now A has been treated with A has been treated with 10 HCl it is giving out B now B is treated with NaNO2 HCl it is giving out C now C is treated with H3PO2 that is phosphonic acid this is giving out D now D is treated with O3 zinc and water this is giving out E now E is treated with just a second kids just a second now E is treated with hydrogen E is treated with hydrogen hydrogen KOH ethylene glycol ethylene glycol 
it is giving out F. What is F? Kids, do let me know. Is there anyone who is going to give me the answer? What is F? What is F? Everyone, do let me know. What is F? Let me see to it. Is there anyone who is going to give me the answer? What is F? Kids, this is the really awesome question based on conversion. Do let me know in the chat section. So, I am going to give the answer and see to it everyone. See to it everyone. Concentrated HNO3, this is being nitration. Nitration, you will get nitrobenzene. You will get nitrobenzene. Now, this is being reduction. This is being reduction. You will get aniline. Now, aniline is undergoing diazotization 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 you are going to get benzene diazonium chloride benzene diazonium chloride now this is a redox reaction redox reaction you are going to get benzene once again you got benzene now this is reductive ozonolysis reductive ozonolysis you are going to get glyoxyl 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 and this is being wolf kishner reduction wolf kishner reduction you will get ch3 ch3 so answer is ethane ethane so this is the revision of organic chemistry you can do it like this kids your sir is there Capto sir is there. Hello warriors. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, HSP sir, how was the session? How are the kids? Fantastic. They are really doing awesome. awesome. Really. Their awesome. energy is good. Their concept clarity is really awesome. Very good. Very good. Uh, so, I'll just load my slides. Uh, yeah, slides yeah, yeah, Meanwhile, yeah. you can just keep talking sir. So, while sir is... I, I should save this? Yeah, yeah, we, we have to, we have to send this okay. PDF. So, sir is saying uh, that it's getting saved kids. Till that time, do let me know. Do you like this question? Kids, just do let me know. Did you like it? Did you like it? The conversion, did you like it? I want to see your sir is just preparing the slide and our capto sir is just saving that file so that we can yes, send it yes. as pdf yes. so till that time do let me know the last question the organic conversion which i have given to you which i have given to you have you liked it did you like it kids do let me know in the chat section your sir is there just within fraction of seconds till that time do let me know do you like it did you like it have you liked it yeah pdf will be shared really pdf will be shared kids pdf definitely it will be shared love from england oh my god really oh really is it true so kids do remember one thing at the last moment of time once again i would like to say just complete your five chapters they are very easy chapters but don't skip those chapters because all question whether it is easy or tough they all carry same marks and most of the time students are getting negative marks in the easy peasy lemon squeezy questions only then they used to say oh shit by chance i was unable to see not by chance i have not seen both if in any question both is given all of these is given we have to take care of those type of questions first of all read it out properly then go through the options wherever all of these is given none is given both is given do take care of this because maximum time most of the time we are doing mistake that is not because our lack of knowledge we are doing mistake because we have not gone through the question properly we have not gone through that those options properly 
am i right very sir very true very true sir perfect advice and don't worry my dear students we are going to come up uh, you know with a small probably session to wish you all the best and give you our final piece of advice just before the examination so i'm pretty sure the chemistry session was rocking it was fantastic fabulous and i can see that by the hearts and the fire which is running through the chat box and if you have not yet smashed the like button do that right now thank you for all those 5.2k likes i think by the end of the session it should be more than 6 6.5 likes and i can see the subscribers increasing so let's take it up to 40000 subscribers make sure you are smashing the subscribe button right away right now and uh, yesterday, we are going to yesterday we saw your appreciating comments in yeah. that the yeah. podcast na no? exactly very we good podcast we were just going through all yes. those appreciating comments and we love those comments very true very true thank really? you so much for commenting guys and it means a lot when you guys comment uh, it it really makes our day because that is what we uh, come here for satisfaction and the satisfaction is through your love support of course your comments that these are just the ways by which you can express your love and definitely this is your channel only once you are going to get selected then that is going to help your younger brothers sisters and your friends relatives exactly thank you so much sir i'll continue have a great lunch see you in some time love you sir yes, love yes. you love take you. care sir take care take care bye kids see you Let me put some water. Uh, Liquid H two. Yes, yes, Liquid yes, H2. yes, sir. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much. All right, what he has ready? What a fabulous session this has been. Call all your friends. Call all your classmates who are who are really worried about physics and they want some final set of questions before the exam before the examination. So yes, let's welcome everyone by doing this. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. So let's begin with the class with full josh, with full energy. And here is the first question which is going to come up on your screen. This is a replica paper. That means this is a model paper. That means expect these models of question in tomorrow's exam. Similar concepts, similar models, similar pattern, similar difficulty. This is what you know. It's going to help you really. You know, save your time in the final examination so that kids keep yourself hydrated with liquid H2O. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. This is for you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. See, that is Steve Avengers. Aqua Man is here. Aqua Man is here with water. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, so much. Chalo, let's begin. And here comes the first question of logic gates. Wow, what a way to start the session. The combination of NAND gates shown here. Under the figure are equivalent to which of the following gates? Come on, think about it. Think about it. Which of the following gates do you think these two represent? Now there are multiple ways of doing this. There are multiple ways of doing this. Observe this. How I am going to do now? One is using truth table, but that is a very lengthy method. Do not do that. Okay, you can take zero zero then. solve it and see which gate it is but i feel that will be lengthy instead what is this guys whenever you see whenever you see this kind of combination where two inputs where the two inputs are basically combined together then that is basically a not gate that is basically a not gate so or if over here this is a this would be nothing but a bar because this is not of that that is nothing but a bar i think you cannot see that bar over here let me make it little bit thick that is a bar correct if this is b this is not of b so this is b bar exactly very good this is a nand gate this is a nand gate that means what will the output be it will be a bar dot b bar that is and to make it nand put a bar over it put a bar over it now we can use de morgan's rule what is de morgan's rule just to give you a very simple idea if there is if there are two two you know variables and you are doing a boolean expression or arithmetic operation of dot that means and then make that dot into plus and whatever numbers are there inside whatever variables are there inside take the not the negation of that so take the bar of a bar and b bar 
take the bar of a bar and b bar. So, if you do bar bar, two times negation is nothing but the original variable. So, a and b. Yes. So, it will become a plus b. That means it is a or gate. Do you see or gate? Yep. It is a or gate. Definitely, it will be either 1 or 4. Definitely, it will be 1 or 4. Now, for the next one, for the next one, what are you going to do, my dear students? This this is a NAND gate, this is a NOT gate. If you notice, this is exactly like this. So, this is NOT gate. This is NOT gate. So, my dear students, this is nothing but just like saying, instead of putting the dot here, I can just say this is AND plus a NOT gate. And again, there is one more NOT gate over here. Both the NOTs will cancel each other. This NOT and this NOT will cancel. Understand, this is behaving this is behaving like a negation, not gate. So, two wrongs make a right, two negatives make positive, two nots make it nothing. That's it. It will cancel and this will be just this gate which is nothing but, which is nothing but an AND gate. So, this is basically an AND gate. Hence, the correct answer will be option 1. Hence, the correct answer will be option 1. Yes, it is correct. So, two important concepts. Whenever you see this kind of thing, Yes, always remember it is a NOT gate. Both the inputs are shorted. The input should be shorted. For a NOR gate or for a NAND gate, the inputs are connected. Then it is a NOT gate. Second thing is the De Morgan's principle. If there is a dot, make it plus. If there is a plus, make it dot. So, it goes vice versa. Dot to plus, plus to dot. Okay, fair enough. Everybody with me? Moving on to the next question. True table is given. Which of the following? Okay is the correct representation of that truth table. I mean, is it a XOR gate? Is it a NOR gate? Is it AND gate or is it OR gate? So, let me just write down the input 0. Uh, uh, so, 0, 0. This is A. This is B. Because it is written horizontally, it looks a little bit difficult. So, let me make it vertical. So, this is 0, 0. Then there is 1, 0. And there is 0, 1. And there is 1, 1. And what are the outputs? The output Y is nothing but 1, 0, 0, 0. What kind of gate can this be? Think about it. Well, if I take, if I take the OR operation, if I take the OR operation, 0 or 0, 0 or 0 will be 0, 1 or 0 will be 0, uh, sorry, my bad, 1, 1 or 0 will be 1, 0 or 1 will also be 1, 1 or 1 will also be 1. Now, these numbers are exactly opposite of that. So, basically, when I am going from here to here, if I am going from here to here, I am putting a NOT gate in front of it. So, I am negating the OR input. I am negating the OR input. That means, you take a OR gate and you put a NOT in front of it. What is it, guys? It is definitely going to be a NOR gate. It is definitely going to be a NOR gate. Very good, Manas. Very good, Mardudan. Very good, JP Hemal. Very good, JMM. Serendipity, Shakir. Excellent, Dr. Devashish. Very good, Bonus Tree. Keep the chats flowing. Very good, Safia. Very good, Sushma. Very good, Priya. Very good, Fakia. Very good, Kavya. Very good, Harshu. Dr. Ilamati. Very nice, my dear students. Proud of all of you. Proud of all of you. Moving on to the next question. Coming up on your screen. Gear up, guys. This is your paper. This is how you will be energetic. Replica means everything you have to replicate. Just like how you will be writing the exam. You should be full on energy. Never be depressed. Never go low on confidence. You should go to the examination center with full, full josh and full, full energy, guys. And I can see so many teachers coming up here. And, you know, the today we are in the Anacademy Studios at Bangalore. And let me tell you guys that there are many teachers who are joining in. Many teachers who are joining in and doing a fantastic job. So many teachers just pass by and they are like, Sir, great. I can see your energy. And all the teachers are over here gathered for the paper discussion. Tomorrow, it's going to be an amazing day. Tomorrow, it's going to be an amazing day, guys. Let me tell you that. All right. Shall we begin with the next question coming up on your screen? And here it is. The ground state energy of hydrogen atom is 13.6 electron volt. 13.6 electron volt. The energy needed to ionize that hydrogen atom from its second excited state, from its second excited state will be how much? Let's try to figure this out. Let's try to figure this out. Okay. So, imagine these are the energy levels. The second excited state. The second excited state will be n is equal to 3. This is your second excited state, guys. This is your second 
एक्साइटेड स्टेट एवरीबडी अग्री फर्स्ट मीन्स एन इज टू सेकेंड मीन्स एन इज थ्री सो इफ आई वॉन्ट टू आयोनाइज इट इफ आई वॉन्ट टू टेक आउट द इलेक्ट्रॉन एंड आई वॉन्ट टू आयोनाइज इट दैट मीन्स आई वॉन्ट टू टेक इट टिल इन्फिनिटी दैट मीन्स दैट आयोनाइजेशन एनर्जी विल बी जस्ट थर्टीन पॉइंट सिक्स जेड स्क्वेर इन दिस केस इट विल बी वन स्क्वेर बाय एन एन विल बी थ्री सो थ्री स्क्वेर थ्री स्क्वेर दैट्स इट एवरीबडी विद मी everybody with me so that's it this is going to be nothing but 13.6 divided by 9 what is the answer everybody has started marking the answer everybody has started marking the answer very good yaar very good 1.51 electron volt excellent hey guys so the electron was supposed to be taken from here to infinity infinity has zero energy so ionization energy is just the positive no negative its binding energy is negative ionization energy is just positive of that same formula binding energy is negative 13.6 z square by n square uh, your ionization energy will be plus 13.6 z square by n square is that okay well let's see whether you guys can solve this i can see so many warriors answering it correctly guys i'm so confident now because this is a replica paper tomorrow you are going to replicate a similar performance a stellar performance in the examination very good guys when hydrogen atom is first in its in its first excited level the radius will be four times twice same half of its ground state i think we need the radius formula we need the radius formula radius of bohr model of any electron's orbit guys is directly proportional is directly proportional to n square right now when we are talking about the first excited state first excited state means what n is equal to 2 n is equal to 2 ground state ground state means what is the value of n the what what is the value of n it is 1 right so what will be the radius what will be the radius in that excited state upon radius in that ground state it will be obviously proportional to 2 by 1 whole square or 2 square by 1 square basically 4 so the radius in that excited state will be 4 times the radius in that ground state remember the radius is proportional to n square so r1 by r2 will be n2 by n or n1 by n2 square so n1 is let's say 2 n2 is let's say 1 so it will be obviously 4 times i can see option a Being spammed throughout the chat box. Very good, Super Mika. Very good, Jee Ma'am. Amit, excellent, Chris. Mohammad, Safiya. Very good. Uh, oh my God, Manas. Very good, East V Vidya. Very good, Srivijay Nipiti. Very good, Doctor. Oh my God. Before I could read the name, it's gone up. Thank you so much, guys, for putting up the chats. Let's move on to the next question on your screen. In the forward bias, the width of the potential barrier in a p-n junction diode increases, decreases, remains constant. First increases, then decreases. What do you guys say? Have to say about this? Yeah, keep smashing the like button as you are chatting, and if you are new to the channel, do not forget to hit the subscribe button to your favorite An Academy Neat English, the top channel for your neat preparation in the country, guys. On your favorite An Academy platform. Come on, guys. What should be the answer for this? Everybody saying, A. Sure. Potential barrier increases in forward bias. I really doubt it. I really doubt it. It should decrease. very good many of you said b now very good the correct answer is b so in forward bias in forward bias the depletion layer decrease uh, that width decreases this is in forward bias whereas in reverse bias in reverse bias you will see that the depletion zone increases increases so in forward bias there is large current here the current is negligible here the current is negligible here the current is there it is definitely not zero it is more than zero when you put it in forward bias it conducts it conducts the electricity which of the following is used or is in forward bias which of the following is used or is in the forward bias read the options carefully option number 1 photodiode option number 2 light emitting diode option number 3 zener diode option d p side connected to negative n side connected to positive one of them is used or is in forward bias all right come on come on come on my dear students what do you think many students have started answering the answer as b is that right is that right definitely light emitting diode 
when you use a photodiode when you use a photodiode it is always used in reverse bias a light emitting diode basically which is there in your mobile your tv and so many other operations that is always used in forward bias your zener diode zener diode looks like the diode is doing egyptian dance right it is doing egyptian dance right exactly that is also used in reverse bias this one p connected to negative n connected to positive opposite terminals definitely this is also reverse bias definitely very good guys keep it coming awesomeness awesomeness we'll start with 2025 preparation also bachcha very soon let the need exam get over which of the following is dependent on the intensity of the incident radiation in a photo electric experiment come on my dear students what do you think this is a question on photo electricity these are the most important topics these are things which you cannot leave guaranteed marks 100% i am telling you you are going to get so many questions from this session and you will come after uh, you know 5 530 you will be like sir my god so many questions have come from these marathons from the short shots from the predicted paper from this session that's it it half of the paper will be like easy for you so amount of current is that so yes perfect in fact you should know the graph graph of intensity and current the graph looks somewhat like this current versus intensity intensity is proportional to the current or current is proportional to the intensity yes stopping potential work function well work function completely depends on the surface it is a constant for a metal for copper it will be different for aluminum it will be different potential stopping potential depends on many things like the work function it depends it depends on the energy of the incident radiation and all of that and the energy of the photo electrons that also depends on the energy which is incident it also depends on the work function so it depends on other things but not the intensity moving on to the next question four electron volt is the energy of the photon four electron volt is the energy of the photon which is incident the work function is two electron volt what is the stopping potential what is the stopping potential come on my dear students what do you think is the correct answer for this what is the stopping potential well see guys energy of the photon goes into two things the work function and the remaining goes into kinetic energy right energy of the photon is 4 electron volt work function is 2 electron volt and the kinetic energy i can always write it as evs kinetic energy is electron charge into the stopping potential this e this e and this e will cancel so i will get 4 volts minus 2 volts is equal to vs so vs is basically 2 volts that is the answer and it is 1 yep it is 1 very good very good just like your performance in the neat exam is going to be one number ek number yes like top notch quality that is how your performance in tomorrow's neat exam i am telling you guys yep moving on to the next question two slits 4 mm apart are illuminated by a light of wavelength 6000 armstrong what will be the fringe width on a screen 2 meters away from the slits hmm question on young's double slit experiment y d s c y d s c all right so fringe width is lambda d by d standard formula now lambda 6000 armstrong so put this over here 6000 armstrong means 10 to the power minus 10 capital d is the distance from the slit to the screen screen to slit slit to screen basically that is 2 meters upon small d small d is always very small just like its size that is 4 mm in case you forget it in the exam always put the small d as small number only so that will be 4 into 10 to the power minus 3 yes or no 2 goes with 4 2 times 2 goes with 6 3 times so what will i get 3 into something so obviously i am seeing the powers of 10 are remaining now so you can see 3 into 10 to the power 3 into 10 to the power minus 10 divided by 10 to the power minus 3 you can see obviously option a can't be correct option d can't be correct option a can't be correct option d can't be correct so it will be either b or c okay so all this my dear students this will become 3 into this will become minus 7 this will become uh, minus 4 so 3 into 10 to the power minus 4 meters which is 0.3 into 
10 to the power minus 3 meters, which is 0.3 millimeters, which is 0.3 millimeters. Very nice. Everybody said B option. You guys are crazy, yeah? What? You guys are decided, yeah? You are going to ace in the physics exam in NEET. You are not going to lose marks. My God, I can see your answers and it's next level, yeah? Next level. Very good, yeah? Very good. You guys are going to do a fabulous job in tomorrow's exam. Moving on to the next question. If the sodium light in Young's double slit experiment is replaced by red light, the fringe width will? Sodium light in Young's double slit experiment is replaced by red light. Sodium light, which color is it roughly? Have you seen that sodium color? What is the color of sodium? Okay, put that color of heart in the chat box. Put that color of heart in the chat box. Let's see who is going to get this right. What is the color of sodium? Put that color of heart. Now you will be like, sir, wait, I have to search for that on that emoji keyboard. Wait, 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 let me see. What is that color? What is that color? Okay. So, meanwhile, I'll write the formula for you. Beta is equal to lambda d by d. Here, when you go to red wavelength, red has large wavelength. Large wavelength. So, if you increase the wavelength, fringe width will also increase. Hence, the answer will be B. Yes. Very good. I can see yellow hearts. Looks like a lot of CSK supporters are here. Chennai Super Kings is here. Looks like it. I can see the chat box filled with yellow hearts. Very nice. Hey, somebody is putting beer also. Who is that fellow? Under 18. Or maybe you are repeating. If you are repeating about 21, then I cannot say anything. Hmm. Other people are kids, no? So think about them. Ah, put yellow cat. Put yellow heart. Put sparkle which is yellow in color or yellow star like Archana has put. No problem. Hmm. Or thunder, lightning. Ooh, some rainbow fellow is also there. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. That is the answer, guys. Sodium is yellowish, orangish in color. Moving on to the next question. The half-life of radium is 1600 years. The fraction of the sample that would remain after 6400 years. Whoa, let's have a look at this. First of all, what I can do is, I can see that the half-life is 1600, but the time that you are spending is basically 6400. So, from here to here, how many half-lives are over? 1600, 1600, 1600. How many times? Four. Four half-lives. Four half-lives. And every time, what will happen? The fraction of the sample that would remain. So, basically, after, after, after 6400 years, basically four half-lives, the fraction that will remain will be half into half into half into half, basically 2 raised to 4 inverse. That is going to be 1 by 16. 1 by 16. Where is it? Option D. Yes. Done, done, done. Crazy. Very good, guys. Proud of all of you. Half, 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 half. Four times. Don't add half plus half plus half. Don't make it 2. That will be stupidity. Oh, somebody is from North Korea also. Hey, North Korea, you are allowed. Kya? YouTube is allowed. I didn't know this. Or you're sitting in North Korea or you're from North Korea and in some other country. I heard some somebody also said that he, uh, he or she was from London. Oh my God, people are writing need exam from every nook and corner of the country. Crazy, no? Crazy. Very good. So competition, that's why it is tough. 21 lakh aspirants. People from North Korea, London, Libya, Sudan, everywhere I think people are writing. I, I can see Fakir is RCB fan. Even I am RC. Oh, by mistake, I showed the answer. Okay. During beta decay a pay of a parent radioactive element, the daughter is dash with the parent. The daughter is dash with the parent. The daughter is dash with the parent. If you are a non-physics student, if you are a non-physics student, then you will be like, sir, the daughter is, daughter is the, you know, uh, she is the star of the parent. She is the pari of the parent. Sir, the daughter is, uh, you know, in love with the parent. No, guys, those options are not there. Pari, no. Uh, in love, no. Uh, the star of the parent, no. no. Okay, isotope, isomer, isotone, isomer. Are we know what happens in beta decay. This is X, this is A, this is Z. And when a beta particle comes out, this becomes a new element. This is A, this is Z plus 1. 
and you get a beta particle that means this is minus 1 and this is 0. So, you can see this A is same, atomic mass number is same. So, it will be a B option isobar. Very good. Isobar. Yes, you can also say princess. Yes, you can also say the princess of the parent. Not princess, daughter is not princess with the parent. That will not come out to be the right way. Yeah, very good. Princess of the parent. Yeah, <laughs> okay, but you get the idea. Moving on, very true, guys. So, all the people, come on, start answering the next question. The D Broglie wavelength lambda associated with an electron having kinetic energy E is given by the expression, is given by the expression Somia is from Mars. Very good. Do you eat that chocolate called Earth on Mars? Because on Earth, no, we eat that chocolate called as Mars. Have you eaten that chocolate? It is very nice. So, we eat Mars chocolate. So, I am pretty sure on Mars you will be eating Earth chocolate. Hai na? I am an isobar of my parents. Wow, Vasu, please. What a dialogue. Yeah. What a dialogue. Definitely. Definitely. Please go and crack these jokes to your parents. Please go and crack. Sir, I am an I Mom, mom, I am, I am your isobar. What bar? What? Come here, come here. What bar? What? What? Uh, no, no, isobar, isobar. Is Sir Todd, yes, Captain Shreya Sir Todd, Captain Shreya Sir Todd, Isobar, atomic mass number is same. Ah, Chumma, you are saying all this. What nonsense words you are learning? Bar and all? Ah, yes, go study for it. That's what will happen. Okay. De Broglie wavelength lambda associated with the electron having kinetic energy is given by the expression. Yes, option A, straightforward. Yep. Lambda is equal to h by p. Lambda is equal to h by p. p is equal to root 2 m e. Standard formula. Standard formula. Very good. Very good. Very good. Moving on to the next question. Coming up on your screen. Coming up on your screen. Here it is. How much energy should be added to the electron to reduce the de Broglie wavelength from this to this value? How much energy should be added to the electron to reduce its de Broglie wavelength? Come on, if you solve the previous question, you can get this question also. Uh, if you solve the previous question, you can get this question also. Think about it. You have to reduce the de Broglie wavelength. Lambda is equal to h by root 2 m e. What do you have to do? You have to reduce the wavelength. You have made it half times. Reduce the wavelength. You, from 1, you have made it 0. 0.5. So, from 1, you have made it 0. 0.5 10 to the power minus 10. So, if you have to make the wavelength half times, if you have to make the wavelength half times, that means this whole expression, you have to make it two times. Did you understand? Because lambda is made half times, 2 is in the denominator, 2 is in the denominator. So, the denominator should be made double. So, the ratio will become half. Denominator, if it is made double, it will be made half. Very good. Now, the whatever is there inside, whatever is there inside, has a root. So, if you want to make this something, something, something E two times, that means if you square both sides, that's something, something E into 4 because 2 square, I am removing that root. I am removing that root. So, energy has to be made how many times? 4 times. 4 times, I think. Uh, achha, the final energy will be 4 times, but the question was how much energy has to be added. So, if the final energy if the final energy is 4e, the amount of energy that you will add will be 3e. So, 3e is basically added to it. So, the final energy will be 4 times. So, we will add 3 energy to it. Correct. Is that clear everyone? Is that clear everyone? So, the final energy will be 4 times, but the amount of energy that will be added. Earlier, there was e. You have to make it 4e. From e to 4e, how much will you add? You will add basically 3 energy. Is that clear? Option D. Do you understand why option D is correct and why not option A? That would be a silly mistake. That would be a silly mistake. So, these are the kind of mistakes that you should avoid in the examination. If you miss this word added, then gone. Then gone. Okay. Moving on to the next question coming up on your screen. The suitable unit for gravitational constant. Mm. See, matchmaking is happening. Just like... You know, in the real world, you have a suitable groom for this particular bride. So, please find a suitable unit for the gravitational constant. 
come on guys suitable unit for the gravitational constant who is going to uh, suit this gravitational constant we know gravitational constant i can find it by this formula f is equal to g m m m1 m2 divided by r square so g will be equal to f r square divided by m1 m2 so force force has a dimension of kg meter per second square that means m raised to 1 l raised to 1 t raised to minus 2 yes or no and r square means l square over here very good divided by or if you don't like these dimensions it's okay force i can just write it as newton radius i can write it as meter and this i can write it as kg square now newton is mass into acceleration that means it is kg into meter per second square into meter divided by kg square divided by kg square so what will happen guys you are just going to get meter into meter is meter square 1 kg 1 kg cancels so kg raised to minus 1 and s raised to minus 2 so where is such an answer s raised to minus 2 uh, i think this should have been uh, minus 2 guys this should have been minus 2 m cube also kg meter per second square oh i'm so sorry guys what mistake did i do i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i'm so sorry ignore 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 i made a stupid mistake i made a stupid mistake i'm sorry i'm just going to do this again fr square by m1 m2 so force is newton so force is newton r square so basically meter square divided by this is kg this is kg so kg square this is newton newton means mass into acceleration so basically kg meter per second square here i have meter square and here i had kg square also okay now let's see what happens meter into meter square is basically meter cube kg and 1 kg will cancel so it will become kg raised to minus 1 and this should become basically s raised to minus 2 so m cube kg raised to minus 1 s raised to minus 2 this should be the answer this should be the answer yep this should be the answer yep okay so here the answer marked is wrong okay here the answer marked is wrong this should be the correct answer is that clear everybody with me everybody with me understood oh can we move ahead yep great 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 very nice very nice let's move on to the next question let's move on to the next question coming up on your screen the dimensional formula of the coefficient of thermal conductivity the dimensional formula of the coefficient of thermal conductivity what is the formula we all know heat flow rate heat flow rate is k into area into temperature difference upon that length this is that formula so let's rearrange all of this let's rearrange all of this to get the value of k so k will be equal to q divided by t l will go on the top a will go below and even temperature difference will come here so the dimensions of your thermal conductivity dimensions of thermal conductivity will be dimension of this 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 all these numbers are going to come q is basically heat that means energy so that means it will be kg meter square per second so m raised to 1 l raised to 2 t raised to minus 2 that is the dimension of q divided by time so i'm just going to put t over here then length that means i'm going to put l raised to 1 over here then area that means i'm going to put l square over here and this is temperature so 1 by kelvin over here is that right so this is how it works now rearrange cancel out whatever gets cancelled out cancel it out and see what do you get you are going to get m is only there over here one so m raised to one l square l square cancels only one l raised to one will be here l square l square cancels only one of those l's will be here this t will go on the top will make it t raised to minus three this t will go on the top will make it t raised to minus three this kelvin raised to minus one will also come kelvin raised to minus one will also come 1 1 minus 3 and minus 1 1 1 minus 3 and minus 1 yes perfect option 1 exactly option a very good guys understood yep i'll be sharing the pdf after the class with these solutions definitely i will be sharing it with you you have to join the telegram channel the link is there in the description box or you can alternatively search it also like on telegram just search for j need underscore captain underscore stress okay you're going to find it moving on to the next question 
error in the measurement of the radius of a sphere is 1%. Then the error in the calculated value of its density, error in the measurement of radius is given, error in the measurement of its density is asked. Density is basically mass by volume. Mass is the same, but volume is basically 4 by 3 pi r cube. Basically, density is 3m by 4 pi r raised to minus 3. All these people are constants because there is only error here. So, that's why there is an error here. Use the concept of relative error. Use the concept now of relative error, which is basically del rho by rho, the change in the density upon the original density that is relative error will be relative error in the radius always choose the mod value always choose the mod value of the power so basically this will be three times the error in the radius radius has an error of one percent hence the answer will be basically three percent three percent excellent sanaya excellent very good Abhinandan, very good Yashasvi, very good Aditya, excellent my dear students. The correct answer is option C which is 3%. Okay. So, whenever you have to find relative error, remember the powers come outside, always choose the mod value. Always take positive value even if it is minus and multiply it with the relative error. Again, another term will be the relative error into power, relative error into power if there are multiple such variables. Common question this will be asked. The body travels uniformly for these many meters in these many seconds. What is the calculated value of the speed? What is the calculated value of the speed? Let's try to find this out. Now, see guys, this is just like saying this is V. Sorry, this is distance, right? So, basically, you can just say this is, you know, distance plus minus the error in the distance. This is time plus minus error in the time. All right. So, now if I want to find the almost approximate value of the velocity which is most probable the most likely value of velocity i'll take the most likely value of the displacement or the distance and the most likely value of the time so that is basically 20 divided by 4 which is basically 5 but since this has one decimal over here so i'm just going to put it over here like this so that is basically that many meters per second is the velocity which you are expecting it but because there is some uncertainty in time and distance, there will be uncertainty in velocity. Where is 5.0 in the answer? 5.0 is here and 5.0 is here. Obviously, this can't be correct. This can't be correct. Do you understand why the decimal is important? Did you understand why the decimal is important, guys? Because the moment you divide, actually it is 20.0 divided by 4.0. So, you should have two significant digits. That's the reason why I have put two significant digits over here. Is that part understood? Is that part understood? Okay. Now, how do I find the relative error? <coughs> For that, use this formula. V is S raised to 1, T raised to minus 1. Relative error in velocity is relative error in distance, but 1 times because the power is 1, plus relative error in time. The power is minus 1, but always choose the positive value. So, again 1. That's it. This is the formula. Let's see what do we get. So, delta V by V, V is basically 5 is equal to delta S by S. So, 0.2 by 20 plus delta T by T, which is 0.1 divided by 4. So, this is just going to be 1 by 100 plus 1 by 40. Is that right? So, now just cross multiply guys or take LCM and all of that. See what do you guys get. So, delta V by 5 is equal to the LCM is just going to be 200, right? And 100 goes with 200 2 times and 40 goes with 20, basically 5 times, right? And 2 plus 5 is 7. So, delta V will be 7 into 5 divided by 200. Now, this 5 goes with this 200 40 times, right? So, this will be basically 7 by 40. Now, just find the value of 7 by 40 approximately. How much does it come out to be? How much does it come out to be? Come on, my dear students. How much does it come out to be? Is it 0.2 or 0.3? Should I take it as 0.2 or 0.3? Exactly. It will come very close to, very close to 
0.2. Only put till this decimal. Don't put more decimals. Exactly. So the correct answer should be 0.2. That means option D. Exactly. So that is the error in the velocity. This was the most probable velocity. This is how you solve these kind of questions. Okay. 0.2. No guys, it is not 0.3. Just check it out. It should be 0.2. Exactly. It should be 0.2. Yep. Right. Very nice. Very nice. Excellent. Excellent. Let's move on to the next question coming up on your screen. Out of the following options, which one can be used to produce a propagating electromagnetic wave? Come on, guys. Think about it. Come on, guys. This is standard question. This is standard question. Everybody should be able to do this. Everybody should be able to do this. Which of the following options one can be used to pro produce a propagating electromagnetic wave? Everybody, just try to do this. Stationary charge? No, it will only produce electric field. It will only produce electric field. A chargeless particle? No field. No field at all. No field at all. Accelerating charge? It will produce electric and magnetic field. And a moving charge particle at constant velocity. If it is moving at constant velocity, it is just electric field. This will produce your radiations, guys. This is well, something which you would have studied even in atomic structure. Atomic structure. Do you remember that was one of the problems with Thomson's model of the atom? He was not able to explain why when electron is accelerated, it is not emitting radiation and falling inside the nucleus. But Bohr told there are stable orbits in which the, there is no emission of any electromagnetic radiation. Only in those orbits, the energy remains fixed. So that is the concept used over here, okay, from that particular chapter. Next question, the relation between electric and the magnetic field intensity in an electromagnetic wave, beautiful question, mix of formulas, there is a nice grind and mix of formulas in this particular question. Let's see if you can figure this out. First of all, we know that for an electromagnetic wave, the speed of light is nothing but 1 by root mu naught epsilon naught. Is that right? That is the formula for the speed of light. Speed of light is also E by B. So this E by B is 1 by root mu naught epsilon naught. But I don't want B, I want magnetic field intensity. There is a separate formula for that. H is basically the magnetic field divided by mu naught. Rather, B is equal to mu naught into H. So how about using, instead of B, I will use mu naught into H over here. Rest of the things are as it is. So this is 1 by root mu naught epsilon naught. Now you can see root mu naught, root mu naught will cancel. Correct? Root mu naught, root mu naught will cancel. So this will become E divided by root mu naught into H is equal to 1 by root epsilon naught. So what's the last step? Question was what is the uh, relation? Okay, E is equal to. So therefore, E will be equal to H goes on the top. H goes on the top. Mu naught with the root symbol goes on the top. And what remains inside is also at the bottom epsilon naught inside the root. That should be the answer. Where is where is that option? Option D, option 4, mu naught by epsilon naught into H. Exactly. What a question, guys. How many chapters involved? Come on, put up the answer. How many chapters were involved? How many chapters were involved? There were two chapters involved. Was it difficult? No. If you don't know the formulas, you cannot do it. If you knew the formula of speed of light, is this also and this also? And you should know this chapter, magnetic properties. That's it. Then you will get it. Okay. I hope this is very, very clear. Very good, guys. Very good. Keep it going. Keep it moving. Let's move on to the next question coming up on your screen right now. An alpha and a proton are accelerated by the same potential difference. And they enter a transverse magnetic field. The ratio of the radii. This is a very standard question which has been asked many times in different ways. So if you take alpha and a proton and it is accelerated, obviously it will gain some speed, some kinetic energy and once it enters magnetic field, it will go in a circular path and there will be some radius associated. That radius is given by mass into velocity divided by charge into magnetic field. Now that mass into velocity, I can just write it as momentum and this will be Q into B. Momentum 
is nothing but root of 2 m kinetic energy divided by charge into magnetic field. That is the formula. But I do not want it in terms of kinetic energy. I want it in terms of voltage. So, the kinetic energy one will gain will be the charge into the voltage difference. Kinetic energy is the charge into that voltage difference through which it has been accelerated. So, this divided by QB. QQ will cancel, only one root will remain. So, I think I should get 1 by B. Here, I will have root 2 M and I will also have delta V and I will have Q inside the root but below. Root Q, root Q will cancel root q root q will cancel root q will remain below is that okay now from this what are you seeing the radius of that orbit or no sorry that path is directly proportional to root of m and inversely proportional to the root of q that's enough for me to solve the problem so the radius of alpha upon radius of proton alpha by proton will be nothing but mass of alpha upon mass of a proton and inversely related to the charges. So, charge of basically proton on the top, charge of alpha bottom. If alpha is there on the top, mass will be there on the top for alpha because it is directly proportional to that. Inversely proportional, so if alpha is here, alpha will be below here. Okay. So, what is mass of alpha as compared to that of proton? It is four times that of proton. Proton is just, that is it, one proton. Alpha means two protons, two neutrons, correct. This one over here, proton is 1 E charge, alpha particle will be 2 E charge, so 1 is to 2 ratio, 1 is to 2 ratio, everybody agrees, standard things, okay. So, what will be remaining, 2 and 4 will cancel, I will be just left with 2 and this is 1. So, root 2 by 1 should be the answer, option D should be the answer, okay, everybody, yeah, root 2 by 1 is the answer. What a question guys. This is very probable question. You will remember me if this question comes. Okay, this type of question has come many, many times. Sometimes they give you same voltage. Sometimes they give you same momentum. Sometimes they tell you it is alpha and maybe some other particle. Sometimes proton and electron. You know, different variations of these problems can come. Okay, all right. Moving on. Are you guys enjoying the questions? Are you guys enjoying the questions? Yeah, these are all hand-picked questions on the sure shot topics. Capacity of a parallel plate condenser depends on type of the metal, thickness of the plate, potential applied or the separation between the plates. Type of the metal, thickness, potential applied or the separation. The capacitance formula is epsilon naught dielectric constant A divided by D. The type of the metal has got nothing to do with it. Thickness of the plates has got nothing to do with it. Potential, nothing. Separation, yes, that is D. That is this D. So, yes, capacitance does. The capacitance does depend on the separation between the plates, not on the thickness or the material or the voltage applied to it. Definitely, answer is 4. And I can see many of you spamming the answer out there. Very good, guys. Looks like you guys remembered the formula. And let's see if you guys can solve this now. Okay, this is slightly tricky, but you can solve it if you apply the right formulas. The wire connected across a potential difference is stretched to twice its length. Then the ratio of the old to new drift speed of the charge carriers. Drift speed. Okay. What's the formula that you remember for drift speed? I remember NVIDIA, the graphics card company. Current is flowing through the graphics card. So, current is equal to NVIDIA. NVIDIA. It's a famous company, guys. NVIDIA. If you are a computer enthusiast, definitely you would know this company. So, what is the drift speed? What is the drift speed? It is current by NEA. Current by NEA. Is that right? Okay. Now, I do not think the current is same because the voltage difference is same. Voltage difference is same. And current is nothing but the voltage divided by the resistance. So, divided by NEO and A over here. Now, what is resistance? What is resistance? Resistance is rho L, resistivity into length divided by area, NEA. Now, what happens over here is this area and this area just get cancelled, just get cancelled. And let us see what happens next. So, the drift speed, the drift speed will be equal to the voltage that you apply upon rho, rho, N, E and L. That means the drift speed is 
that means the drift speed is inversely proportional to the length is directly inversely proportional to the length area got cancelled it is not dependent on the area so if you notice the length has been doubled so if length has been doubled the drift speed will be made half the drift speed will become half now the question is uh, old to the new so the old drift speed divided by the new drift speed we saw that the new drift speed is half of the old one so basically it is 2 is to 1 basically it is 2 is to 1 so not 1 is to 2 be careful it is 2 is to 1 the new speed has become half so the lower number should be there later on earlier it was double so 2 is to 1 don't make this mistake don't make this mistake many of you have marked 1 is to 2 be very careful in ratios especially when both kinds of options are there 3 is to 5 5 is to 3 2 is to 7 7 is to 2 that means you need to be extra extra careful is that okay are you guys learning are you guys enjoying are you guys gaining some confidence or is it like no sir my god so many things to learn but i'm learning yep okay so don't worry guys there might be lot of things running in your head oh my god i have not studied this oh my god instead of watching this lecture okay let me just start studying oh my god i'm getting nervous cool aram se i'm telling you na i have written so many times even in school and college level i used to chumma go and write some or the other exam even if i don't know the subject okay i would have written some exam but I would have prepared exam aise aram se and still I would have got some decent marks, you know, qualified for that exam also. And then, you know, the reason behind that was obviously uh, in those five days, I will just concentrate on what is asked in the previous uh, things, uh, previous years. I would also concentrate on, you know, only those things which I know. And yes, I would do some calculations or guesswork or some manipulations and some substitutions and that will help me get the answer. So, Trust me, even if you have not studied much now, you can still get some base marks, okay? You just apply your proper, have your proper frame of mind, okay? Just have your proper frame of mind, that's it. That's all is needed. After that, everything will follow. If you get tense, even if you study for the last two, three years, you will still face a difficulty over there. Okay, so this was done. This was done, right. So moving on to the next question. The potential difference between A and B in the adjoining figure. Achha, let's try to figure this out. This is a battery, there is no resistance here. So, if I find the voltage difference between these two points, it's basically 2 volts. The voltage difference between A and C is basically 2, two volts. It's basically 2 volts, correct? Now, this current which is there, this current which is there, this branch and this branch, same current, 555555. So, some current will go like this, some current will go like this. That same current will go like that, like that, like that. And this current will go like this, like this, like this. And it will get accumulated over here and again flow back. So, it will go like this, like that, like this, like that. That is how it is going. If you look at this loop, if you look at this loop over here, which loop am I talking about? Which loop am I talking about? I am talking about C, A, B, C. Look at C, A, B, C. C loop. If you just look at that C A B C loop, if I assume that the current in that particular loop is I, if I assume that the current in that particular loop is I, that current will be that voltage in that loop which is 2 divided by the total resistance. So, 5 plus 5 plus 5 which is 2 by 15 amperes. Is that right? 2 by 15 amperes yes or no? Everybody with me? Ramya will start for 2024 also. Techno enthusiasts, I have made a separate video for all the students who are getting very less marks in physics, 20 marks, 30 marks, 50 marks, 60 marks, 70 marks. If you are getting these many marks in physics or maybe just barely touching 80, 90, then I have made a separate video for those students who want 100 marks to 80 marks at least. There is a separate video for 150 marks also. So, please watch that video for 100 marks. It is there in the past videos, not live. It is a video. It is I think 6 to 7 minutes, not more than that. All right, guys. Now, that is not the question. The actual question is what is the voltage difference between points A and B? It will be current into resistance between A and B. Current is basically 2 by 15. Resistance is basically 5 plus 5. So, it will be 2 by 15 
into 10, 10 goes with 5, 2 times, 15 goes with 5, 3 times. So it will be basically 4 by 3 volts, which is option C, which is option C, C for Captain Shreyas. Very good. Vikar Vinod, I was born in Tamil Nadu, yeah. Salem. Yep, I was born in Salem. So understand what has happened. This is a battery. There is voltage difference of 2 volts between these two points. So, once A and C has a voltage difference of 2 volts, this bottom part of the circuit does not matter for this particular part. Because I know between A and C, just think guys, between A and C, you just have this resistor, this resistor and this resistor. I just know one thing, there is 2 volts applied across it. So, that 2 volts will supply some current, that 2 volts will supply some current. So, that current will be voltage by resistance. So, that current is just nothing but the voltage divided by that resistance, that resistance. So, voltage is 2 volts, resistance is 5 plus 5 plus 5. Once I found the current, what did I do? Between these two points, the voltage will be current into this resistance, this resistance, which is 5 plus 5. That's it. Rest is maths. Simple. Nish is also from Salem. Very good. Excellent. Shall we move to the next question? Shall we move on uh, to the next question, guys? Everybody understood? Clear? Pakka? Understood what steps we have done? Why we did not consider this part? Because I know between these two points, the voltage is 2 volts. So, just consider this part to solve the problem. Don't have to use KVL, KCL. Don't have to use KVL, KCL, guys. Yeah? Moving on. Find the equivalent resistance of this circuit. This is a standard question. Everybody should know how to solve this. I am solving this for you. Okay, I have not put options deliberately. So, first of all, you can see this part is getting repeated. R, 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 that is getting repeated. So, assume that the resistance between these two points is basically X. Assume that the resistance between these two points is X. So, I can say that if I start from point A, I will get this resistance R. I will also get this resistance R and I will come back to this point D. After this, if you just forget these first two resistance, if you just forget these first two resistances, don't you see the exact same thing is happening as if it was happening from here? See, you are getting RR, RR, RR like that. Now, just start from B and end at C. Forget these two points. Forget these two resistors, basically. Don't you see same RR, RR is there till infinity? You can see the same thing getting repeated. So, can I say whatever is there in front is just like a new infinite series which will have the same equivalent resistance which will have the same equivalent resistance x so can i not replace this entire thing this entire thing this entire thing is also another infinite ladder whose equivalent resistance is basically x are you convinced till here are you guys convinced till here perfect r and x are in parallel R and X are in parallel. So, the next step will be basically just having this resistance and one more resistance here. So, this is R and this will be Rx upon R plus X. And finally, I will just combine it into one single resistance. One single resistance. So, what will be that equivalent resistance? What will be that equivalent resistance? It will be series, right? So, R plus Rx divided by R plus X. R plus X. But hold on. I already know that between these two points, the equivalent resistance, between these two points, the equivalent resistance is X. Between these two points, the equivalent resistance is basically X. So, why not just put this value as X only? So, X will be equal to, here you can see R is common or you can just say R into R plus X plus Rx is there over here. The whole thing divided by R plus X, taking LCM guys. I just take an LCM. Take this guy over here. So, X into R plus X square will be R square plus Rx plus Rx. Alright. So, Rx and Rx will cancel. So, X square minus Rx minus R square is 0. This is a quadratic equation. You can see clearly this is a quadratic equation in X. So, X will have two roots minus b that means minus of minus r which is plus r plus or minus b square that means r square minus 4 into a is 1 c is minus r square so make it plus 
and then r square over here divided by 2 into a a is basically 1 so see what do you guys get see what do you guys get r plus or minus r square r square is common when you once you take it outside the root it will just become r you will be just left with 1 plus 4 divided by 2 the next step come on guys x will be equal to r is common r is common even 2 is common what is left inside is 1 plus root 5 1 plus minus root 5 1 plus minus root 5 is that clear but there is a catch how can you take minus because 1 minus root 5 will be less than 0 resistance can't be negative resistance can't be negative understood so minus should be ignored as resistance is always positive so hence the value of x that i will take will be r by 2 1 plus root 5 that is the final final answer that is the final final answer see if you guys got this so first step find the part which is getting repeated okay let's say it is this part after that if you take out one such part doesn't matter the rest of the circuit is still infinite ladder circuit which has the same equivalent resistance that you have assumed then replace that entire part with that x it will be a parallel series combination just solve it the total combination should again be x the total combination should be again x you will always find a quadratic equation with two roots with two roots but one of them will be negative which you will ignore only choose the positive value okay this is the probably the tough problem which can come but this is probable i'm just telling it to you okay now this is a simple one the first overtone of a stretched wire of length 320 hertz uh, of a given length is 320 hertz what is the frequency of the first harmonic come on guys uh, Rafiq, you cannot remember the final formula because i'll tell you why this is rr that's why you got it what if this was r1 r2 or 2 ohms 5 ohms 3 5 3 5 3 5 so it will change now so this was where uh, all the r's are same procedure will remain same just the values will change formula will change okay is that okay first overtone stretched wire guys for a stretched wire the frequency formula the frequency formula is basically n v by 2 l basically all harmonics are present all the harmonics are present first overtone first overtone means basically second harmonic second harmonic is that right so what is uh, this 320 320 is basically two times of the fundamental so fundamental frequency is basically 320 divided by 2 which is basically 160 hertz so that is nothing but your fundamental that is nothing but your fundamental frequency or your first harmonic which is option 2 or option b very good very good guys very good proud of all of you shall we move to the next question all right this was a stretched wire that's why all harmonics are present if it was stretched at one end and free at the other end then it will be odd v by 4l odd v by 4l for that fixed free end kind of wire if you study the vibration of a pipe which is open at both ends then which of the following is not true which of the following is not true okay let's see if you guys are smart if you solve this question now then tomorrow 120 plus guarantee 120 plus guarantee come on come on come on let's see how many of you can do this pipe open at both ends first try to recollect the formula it is that open at both ends what is the formula is it nv by 2l or is it odd v by 4l hmm. open at both ends so that means that means it will be nv by 2l very good now try to think whether open end will be anti node for displacement odd harmonics will be generated all harmonics will be generated pressure changes will be maximum at both ends well many of you made a wrong actually i should have not put 120 or 150 should be the correct score if you solve this then you will get 150 above it's not that simple also now that i think about it now that i think about it it is not that simple i mean considering that you are been given very little time correct answer is d4 yes i'll tell you why the moment a pipe is open on both sides the formula for frequency 
is n times v divided by 2l n times v by 2l so basically fundamental is there then 2f naught is there 3f naught is there 4f naught is there 5f naught is there all these things are present are all the harmonics generated yes odd harmonics are generated see odd one times three times five times yes guys read the statement carefully if it said only odd harmonics are generated then it is wrong only odd harmonics are generated is the word only there that word only it is not there na so odd harmonics are generated yes it is generated even harmonics are generated yes it is generated did you understand the difference yes only odd is not there odd is there yeah definitely what is there? It's just like saying, you know, some person has some bad qualities. Yes, he has bad qualities. He has good qualities also. I'm not saying he has only bad qualities. Understood? Okay. Next, at the open end, at the open end, you have always the anti-node. It's free. So, you have anti-node for the displacement. Yes. So, the particles can go in and out very easily. So, definitely, there is displacement anti-node pressure changes will not be maximum in fact pressure wise it is pressure node pressure node that means the variations the variations are negligible it's a node node means zero so pressure wise there are no variations is that clear so hence option d is the correct answer everyone clear all right moving on to the next question coming up on your screen this question also many students might make a mistake okay but before that some of you wanted the uh, you know explanation for this again i'm just explaining this again if it is open the particles can go out can come in go out and come in easily now so displacement is huge maximum maximum means anti-node so displacement anti-node wherever there is displacement anti-node at that place you will find pressure node if somewhere in between there is displacement node then that place will have pressure anti-node it is always opposite pressure node displacement anti-node pressure anti-node displacement node vice versa okay is that clear very good very good shall we move to the next question let's see how many of you can do this a ray of light travels from dense to rare the critical angle is c the maximum possible deviation maximum possible deviation see guys if you send the right like this all right it will go like this small deviation if you increase that angle then it will deviate even more now in the special case imagine because you're going from dense to rare right so this is exactly the critical angle almost all right so the ray which will be there it will almost come out grazing uh, refraction so you will see that this angle will be close to 90 degrees this angle will be close to 90 degrees is everybody able to visualize this i'll just repeat the diagram again if this is the interface this is the normal if i'm sending the light at the critical angle at the critical angle let's say c then it will come out at grazing refraction angle this will be almost 90 degrees the refracted ray deviation will be how much that is the question so what i will do is i'll just extend this line i'll just extend this line if this angle is c obviously this angle is c obviously this angle is c the ray was supposed to go over here but now it is going here so this angle is the deviation angle this angle is the deviation angle everybody understood the ray was supposed to go here but now it is going here so what is the deviation the total angle 90 degrees minus this c which is basically pi by 2 minus c pi by 2 minus c where is it option oh sorry this is not option 3 guys this is wrong it is option 1 it is option one okay everybody with me everybody with me understood how this problem has to be solved critical angle will give you maximum deviation and when you will see the refracted ray it is almost coming at 90 degrees with the normal so if you mark this angle as c the opposite angle will be c so this angle by which the ray has deviated is basically 90 minus c pi by 2 minus c is that okay very good very good excellent guys proud of all of you total internal reflection has not yet occurred 
sunshine very good question it has not yet occurred because it is still getting refracted it is almost 90 degree it is almost critical angle if critical angle was 30 degree i am putting it at 29.9999 degrees something like that anything more than that tuck karke it will get reflected after reflection it will behave like a mirror only so here the question says refracted that means you are very close to the critical angle but not exceeding it that is the meaning of that no uh, this and this is not equal how is 3 and 1 equal this is pi by 2 minus c this is pi minus 2 c this is pi minus c this is 2 c obviously all the other angles are wrong okay so the answer marked over there was wrong don't worry if the critical angle in a liquid is 60 degree in another liquid is 45 degree then the critical angle for the ray traveling from a to b will be how much from a to b will be how much come on guys think about it how are you going to solve this question think all right so come on guys we are little bit more than halfway through you cannot lose your patience you cannot lose your cool concentrate on the class concentrate on the class the critical angle is for this liquid is 60 another is 45 then the angle from a to b will be more less etc we all know the formula for critical angle it is 1 by mu so if the critical angle is more then the refractive index is less refractive index is less now the critical angle for a is definitely more than the critical angle for b because 60 degree is more than 45 degree correct therefore the refractive index of a is less than the refractive index of b because they are inversely related to each other inversely related to each other now let me draw them so where is the light going from a to b so it is going from basically from a to b a is rare medium rarer medium i would say b is basically little bit denser medium if by chance light goes from rare to dense rare to dense it will always bend towards the normal it can never get internally reflected for it to get internally reflected for it to get internally reflected you should go from dense to rare so total internal reflection can't occur definitely not possible because it is going from rare to dense dense to rare is possible hence does not exist hence does not exist is that clear everybody everybody understood how many of you thought that no no something is wrong it should be more than this less than that it will not come out only yeah, sorry it will never get internally reflected only it will always get refracted very good very good what a question guys what a question na? so for total internal reflection to occur it should go from dense to rare not rare to dense that is the catch moving on particle moves with constant angular velocity in a circle during the motion what is conserved come on a particle is going in a circular path with constant angular velocity so what do you think is constant my dear warriors is the energy conserved is the momentum conserved you can see if the momentum is here then after some time the momentum is here it's not angular momentum it is linear momentum so definitely momentum is not constant vector wise because the direction direction is changing direction is definitely changing not just that even the force even the centripetal force which is there once it is here once it is here so even the force is not constant the reason being direction the direction is changing so even the force is not constant energy is definitely conserved half mv square is constant hence option one very good lokendra very good jp roy kartika mushin very good Linita, very good. Uh, Mansi, uh, no, Safia, it's not three. No, Sudarshan, it's not three. Very good, Linita. Very good, Soumya. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Is, I hope this is very, very clear in everybody's head. Moving on to the next question on your screen. The rotational energy of a flywheel making 120 rpm is approximately, is approximately how much? Let's try to do this. Rotational kinetic energy formula is half moment of inertia omega square moment of inertia is because it's a flywheel like a disc mr square by 2 
into omega square. Now I can write this as m r square by 4 and omega I will have to convert it because this is RPM. So what I'll have to do, I'll have to write 120 divided by 60 because that will make it per second and then I will have to multiply it by 2 pi to make it into radians per second square. Radia sorry, radians per second. So 120 rounds per minute. So per second divided by 60. Each round is 2 pi radians. So these many radians per second. Now substitute. What is the mass? Uh, oh my god, mass is not given. <laughs> okay, I think there is a printing mistake over here. So maybe the mass will be some value, radius will be some value. I just put the values of mass and radius later on. Okay, I'll have to backtrack it and then, you know, figure this out. I don't know how many of you are giving answers like that only. How are you giving answers like that? Yeah, where is the mass? <laughs> where is the radius? <laughs> All right. So the mass and the radius would have to be given in order to get the answer. Okay. So you just substitute the value of the mass, substitute the value of the radius, square it, divided by 4. And here, the 60 and 120 will go 2 times. So this will become 4 pi whole square. You solve this, solve this. Remember, 4 square will be 16. Pi square is roughly 10. Pi square is roughly 10. Yes or no? Pi square is roughly 10. Agree or disagree? That's what I have done. Approximation. Pi square 3.14 into 3.14 is very close to 9.99 or 9.98. That means very close to 10. Very good. So I can see 60. 160 is there. Maybe some numbers will be there over here final answer has come out to be 320 that means there were numbers over here that made it into basically 320 i'm not not putting it over here okay i will tell you you can put any values and see whichever values work those are the answers okay if it could be 2 kg 4 kg 1 kg 3 kg whatever but i hope you understood the method the values are missing in the problem i'll put it in the final pdf i'll put it in the final pdf is that okay can we move ahead to the next question, guys? Can we move ahead to the next question, everybody? All right. Chalo, let's move on. The magnetic induction at the center of the loop carrying current I is how much? Some of you got it right also. How did you get it right? How did you get it right, guys? Using my trick? No. What was my trick? Always ignore the smallest and the highest values. Always ignore the smallest and the highest values. It will be one of them. It will be one of them. Either it will be A or B. That was the trick. <laughs> okay. So, oops, I shouldn't have showed the answer, but okay, let's solve this. Think of it like a subjective question because options is of no use in these kind of questions. Question is, what is the magnetic field at the center of this particular loop? First, consider only this semicircular loop. Because of that part, the magnetic field will be mu naught I by 2R, mu naught I by 2R, okay, but because it's a semicircle, half of the circle, so multiplied by half, that is the thing, half of that circle, okay, if it was a complete circle, then this half will not come, if it was quarter circle, this will be one fourth, all right, if it is three fourth of a circle, three fourth will come, now the next part, for this one, for this part, for this part, what will be the magnetic field's contribution? It will be mu naught current divided by 2 into the radius itself is 2R, but only half of the circle should be taken because it's again a semicircle. That's it. These parts are not contributing. This has no role to play. This has no role to play over here. This is on that line that will not generate magnetic field at the center. So ignore. Whenever you have a wire, magnetic field is generated around it. The magnetic field on the axis magnetic field on the axis is zero of that wire keep this in mind so these both let's add them and see what do you get let's add them and see what do you guys get so mu naught i by 2 into 2 4 4 r is there definitely so 1 plus 1 plus half these two twos will become 4 these two twos will become 4 r is also taken out mu naught i is also taken out so this will become mu naught i divided by 4 r half plus 1 is 3 by 2 so it will be mu naught current divided by 8 times of r 
and there is 3 over here. That's it. So, 3 mu naught i divided by 8 r. Is that okay? Yes, the factor that will come out will be 3 by 8. 3 by 8 mu naught i and divided by r. Excellent, eh, guys. Sir, all things I am forgetting. I will tell you what, you are trying too hard to remember things. Do not try like that. Be very calm, be very natural, let it be free flowing, uh, write down things or you know just sit after this lecture, just sit coolly and try to remember the formulas. Do not try to see anything. If you watch many videos now, that is very bad guys. I mean it is not the right time to watch videos, learn something and you know uh, watching one shots that is definitely not the time. Please do not do that. Moving on to the next question. The magnetic moment of a current carrying circular coil radius r and number of turns n varies as very simple magnetic moment I had given you the formula is number of turns into current into area n i a area is basically pi r square. So, clearly magnetic moment is proportional to the square of the radius square of the radius. So, that is option D that is option D very good guys. Yep everyone with me can we go ahead excellent let us move on let us move on a man sitting in a moving train hears the whistle of the engine the frequency of the whistle is imagine this is the train this is the engine these are the bogies if the train sounds the horn okay this is the train all right if the train sounds the horn the sound will go like that imagine there is a pandu somewhere over here what will be the apparent frequency heard? It will be the original frequency only which is basically 600 hertz because there is no relative motion. Both of them are moving with the same speed. Both of them are moving together. So, when there is no relative motion, when there is no relative motion, how will there be change in the frequency? It will be exactly 600 hertz. How many of you wrote C? I can see Roshan writing it C. Many of you made a mistake by writing A or B. Exactly. That is the correct answer guys C because there will be no relative motion. If there is relative motion, if there is any kind of relative motion, okay, one is moving faster, one is moving slower or they are moving opposite, then there is apparent frequency change. Exactly. Moving on to the next question. If a sound source is moving towards a stationary observer with one tenth the speed of the sound, the ratio of the apparent to real frequency is, the ratio of the apparent to the real frequency is, come on my dear students, come on my dear students, let us have a look, let us see. First of all, the apparent frequency is original frequency, speed of sound plus minus drift, uh, sorry, detector speed and C by plus minus source speed. So, F apparent divided by original will be speed of sound the detector is not moving it is the uh, stationary ob uh, sorry the source is moving the observer is stationary the source is moving. So, C and V s will be one tenth of C. So, C by 10 because you are going closer the frequency should increase to increase the frequency the denominator should decrease. So, put minus sign to increase the frequency the ratio should increase denominator should become smaller. So, that is why I am putting minus sign. Now, C, C, C will cancel. So, 1 minus 1 by 10, which is basically 1 by 9 tenth, 10 goes on the top. So, it will become 10 by 9. So, the fraction of the apparent frequency uh, chain uh, versus the, you know, original frequency is basically 10 by 9. You can see it right over here. Exactly. Option A. Exactly. Very good. Moving on to the next question. There is a long solenoid, 800 tons per unit length, current is 1.6, the magnetic field at the end of the axis is, end of the solenoid's axis is how much? Lot of you might immediately jump to this formula mu naught n i, you will put mu naught is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7, number of turns you will put it as 800 and the current you will put it as 1.6, but let me tell you there is a catch, what is the catch? at the end that means at the end the formula is by 2 always at the end now the formula is by 2 how many of you forgot this if you had forgotten or you did not know this remember it now so mu naught ni is inside mu naught ni by 2 is out just outside at the end 
that's it. So that by 2 is very important. So that 2 and this 4 gets cancelled. So I will have 2 into 8 into 16, this into pi into 10 to the power minus 7 into 100 into, I have shifted the decimal, that means 10 to the power minus 1. Okay, so this will become, come on, 8 to the 16, 16 into 16, that is 256 pi into 10 to the power minus 8, 10 to the power minus 6. So this is 10 to the power minus 6. Now 256 into pi, how much will it be approximately? 256 into pi, pi is 3.14, 250 into 3 is basically 750. 256 into 3.14 will be more than 750, slightly more than 750. Agree or disagree? 250 into 3 is 250, 250, 250, 750. 256, bigger number. Pi is 3.14, slightly bigger. So, it will be more than 750, that means somewhere close to 800, na? somewhere close to 800 into 10 to the power minus 6. So, this will be nothing but 8 into 10 to the power minus 4 Tesla. 8 into 10 to the power minus 4 Tesla, which is option B. Exactly. Exactly. Very good. Very good. Exactly. So, this is how you should do calculations. If you thought, no, sir, I thought I would do this 256 and then 3.14. If you are doing this and then doing all that and then approximating, that is waste of time. Waste of time. This is manipulation. This is how calculations have to be increased in speed. Okay. Moving on to the next question. In an elliptical orbit under gravitational force, generally, time is proportional to r cube, time is proportional to r raised to half, time cube is proportional to r square, or t square is proportional to r cube. Confusing options. Girish, you can search for uh, captain underscore Shreyas, captain underscore Shreyas on Instagram. Yeah. Okay. I hope that is clear. Come on. Let's see how many of you can... Uh, find this question's answer out very quickly. This is based on Kepler's law and Kepler's law says that the time period, that the time period square is directly proportional to the semi-major lengths cube. In fact, the formula, you should know T square is basically 4 pi square G or basically 4 pi square R cube divided by gm. So, t square is basically proportional to r cube. That is the formula. t square is proportional to r cube. Yes, option d. Exactly. Don't get confused in the exam. Looks confusing. Okay. Option d. Very good. D for doctor. Wow. Such a nice model. Earth, planet, sun. Sun's distance from the center of the ellipse is given. Center of the ellipse till the end point is given. What is the ratio of the maximum to minimum speed of the planet is asked. Now, remember angular momentum, which is mvr, is constant for a planet going around the sun. This is the major concept. This is the major concept in the problem. Whenever speed question comes in orbits, distance question comes, usually it is on the angular momentum being constant or the aerial velocity being constant. So now, you can see because angular momentum is constant, velocity is inversely proportional to the distance. What is that r basically? It is 1 by distance from the sun. Distance from that sun. So, maximum speed by minimum speed will be basically the largest distance from the sun upon the smallest distance from the sun. Maximum speed upon that minimum speed guys. Come on. What will be that answer? First of all, what is that max distance that you can get? What is this distance? It will be r plus 4r. It will be r plus 4r. What is it going to be? It is just going to be 5r. And the least distance, this will be, if this is 4r, obviously, this is also 4r. This is also 4r, no? This is also 4r. Out of 4r, take out r. So, 4r minus r, basically, it is 3r. So, bigger distance will be 5r, smaller distance will be 3r, rr cancels. So, 5 by 3, 5 by 3, where is it? Option D, no, it is not option A, big by small, yep. Samadhan Raut, the formula for toroids 
magnetic field is very similar to solenoid because if you take a solenoid and you bend it, you get a toroid. So, it is mu naught n i only and just that instead of that small n, you can put capital N total turns by 2 pi radius, the circumference, the length. It is that is all, that is all you need to do. I hope that is very, very clear. All right. Great, great. Okay. Shall we move to the next question coming up on your screen? Okay. Here it comes. Which of the following circular rods, each made of the same material, ends are at the same temperature, will conduct most amount of heat? Will conduct most amount of heat? Let us try to do this. Okay, let us try to do this. If you have a rod and it is maintained at some temperature difference, let us say delta T, okay, and if it is conducting some heat Q by T, that formula is K A delta T divided by L. As per the question, you want most heat to be conducted, conduct most heat. That means this value should be large. Material is same, that means I cannot, I cannot change K. Temperature difference is also done. Material is same and maintained at the same temperature. So, the only thing I can change is area and length. So, to make this large, area should be large, yes or no? Area should be large, yes or no? And the length should be small, length should be small, correct? Length should be small. So, out of L and 2L, out of L and 2L, I will obviously choose L naught small length and out of area to make it large, all right, I will choose the larger radius. So, I will choose either this or this. So, this option is the best option because area is also large, length is also less. Hence, the correct answer is 2. Hence, the correct option is 2. Very good, guys. Proud of all of you. Very good. Proud of all of you. Concentrate on the class. Very good, Sneha. Very good, Serendipity. Very good, Chaitanya. Very good. Very good, very good, Siva, very good, Debashish, very good, Umesh. Excellent day. So, this is how you should play, you should analyze and then mark the answers. Next question, which of the following is not correct for simple harmonic motion? Very interesting. Which of the following is not correct for the simple harmonic motion? Come on, think about it. Think about it. What is the correct answer for this? What is the correct answer for this? Come on, my dear students. Come on, my dear students. Hmm. Yep, think. For a SHM, we all know that F is equal to minus Kx forces directly proportional to the X value. What about second option? Energy is basically half Kx square. Potential energy definitely proportional to the square of X. Acceleration is minus omega square x again directly proportional to x but for velocity my dear warriors velocity formula is omega root a square minus x square hence option c is wrong c is wrong definitely c is wrong understood yep v is not proportional to x everything else is correct no d is correct bacha acceleration is minus omega square x is the formula <laughs> okay See, if you had forgotten, try to put it in your short notes or put it in your mind now. All right. Linear magnification and angular magnification in the microscope have similar magnitude when the image is at a distance of beautiful question, beautiful question. Linear magnification, that means magni magnification, uh, linear means height of that image upon, upon height of that object. The formula for that for a simple lens is V by U. It's just nothing but V by U. Correct? But the meaning of angular magnification, that angular magnification, which is basically that angle subtended by that image upon the angle subtended by that object, by that object at least distance of distinct vision. That is the true definition of angular magnification. It was 5 degree, now it is looking 10 degree, 5 degree to 10 degree. That formula for a simple microscope, if you have seen the derivation, it comes as D by U, 
it comes as d by u yes that is what it comes out as u is object distance d is least distance of distinct vision as per the given question they have similar magnitude that means this is equal to this u is anyways equal that means v should be equal to d so therefore the image distance image distance is d which is basically 25 centimeter 25 centimeter where is the answer yep option 3 25 centimeters so the image is at a distance of d which is 25 centimeters beautiful so you should know this formula if this formula was not known by you please add it into your books remember for a simple microscope when you solve this you get two options when you solve this you get two options one is for normal vision one is for normal vision one is for least distance of distinct vision two options you get so for normal vision it is just d by f and for least distance of distinct vision it is d by f plus one okay so these are the two magnification formulas that you get for a simple microscope simple microscope keep this in mind okay moving on to the next question which of the following is our copper loss losses in a transformer beautiful tricky question theoretical based theoretical based come on let's see if you guys can do this very good Soumya. very good come on Meenakshi very good excellent Subramaniam very good Dr. Debashish these kind of questions are expected tomorrow yes on microscope uh, and all these things true I'll tell you in a microscope or in a lab you would have seen 10x is written 20x is written that is angular magnification what does that mean angle subtended by the image so if you are seeing a bacteria if it is seen at 10 degrees but actual size of bacteria is let's say 0.1 degrees so 10 degrees by 0.1 degrees that is 10 times so that is 10x understood so that is the meaning of angular magnification how much are you spreading it earlier it was this much now you are spreading it more okay so after derivation it comes out as d by u that formula what is the answer yes the correct answer is 3 not 4 see read the question carefully in copper that word copper is very important inside copper the heat loss is because of the primary and the secondary coils because of the primary and the secondary coils they are not asking the total loss yes the total loss will be because of hysteresis loss eddy current loss heat losses in primary and secondary coil all of them will be there that will also include include that material that core of the transformer here they are not asking about that core of the transformer here they are just asking here they are just asking in that wire in that winding in that winding there is no hysteresis in that winding there is no eddy current in that eddy, uh, eddy current is not there in the copper eddy current is not there in that uh, sorry hysteresis loss is not there in that copper winding it is there in the core of the transformer that magnetic material thank you for all the love bacha is that okay so read the question carefully something else is asked it is asked in different context the answers will change moving on the penetration of x-ray increases with increase of what velocity intensity frequency or wavelength pa penetration power of x-rays increases with increase in its what come on guys i can see 5.9 likes 9k likes i want you guys to make it 6000 6k come on yeah let's make it we are nearing the last few questions we are nearing the last few questions i want to end the session after a few questions at at least 6000 likes come on yeah penetration power of x-ray x-rays are very short wavelength they have very short wavelength in Armstrong. They have very high frequency, high energy photons, basically, high energy photons. And because of these high energy photons, that is the reason why their penetration power, their penetration power, because their energy is more, is higher. So if you want to increase their penetration power, then increase their frequency. Exactly. Thank you for making it 6000 likes. Thank you so much, guys. We are nothing without you. Thank you for all that love. Thank you so much. Means a lot. Means a lot. This channel, 
this team and you guys we are in a symbiotic relationship oh my god see i ask for something and you give it more you give more of it trust me we will feel like doing even more you know we don't feel like sleeping we feel like working hard for all of you collecting the questions so even if i get some questions from the team i have made sure that some of the questions are out some of the questions are in so that it is as close as possible to tomorrow's paper so the team has been working really hard for all of you and we are going to work hard for the 2024 batch for the 2025 batch and 2026 batch yep all the batches guys all the future doctors and when you guys will become doctors when you guys will become doctors eventually you someday come down to this channel someday come down to see all of us and you will see all the young warriors out here who are aspiring to become just like you just like you yes and that time i'm pretty sure you would be very well qualified from all the top notch colleges or maybe have your own clinic and maybe practicing on your own or associated with a big hospital or maybe just doing research who knows what you might be doing but that day is more awaited than tomorrow i would say tomorrow is just one step in your big career tomorrow is just one small step in the big career that you're going to have in the near future my dear students so don't worry about tomorrow's exam there are a lot many things that you have to accomplish tomorrow's hurdle is just one small hurdle we'll overcome it and even if you do not pass successfully or if you're not getting the college successfully or you're not scoring well in tomorrow's session don't worry it's okay we can always repeat we can always try again or you can find some better alternatives maybe abroad or maybe some other college who knows something will work out so don't please please don't take tension all right so let's go to the next question two waves are superimposed beats are produced when different amplitudes and phases or different velocities or different phases or different frequencies very good so many of you got goosebumps and if you are getting those goosebumps 100 percent you will be expressing that in the chats or by smashing that like button thank you so much all right yes i'll be posting the pdf in the telegram channel guys don't worry about it don't worry about it different amplitudes and phases different velocities different phases no guys it is different frequencies because the beat frequency formula is f1 minus f2 the mod of it so it has to be different frequencies yes exactly option four option d d for doctor very good and here comes another question up on your screen a capacitor is used to charge a battery and e amount of heat is lost in the process now a slab is introduced of dielectric constant 2 and then the new energy is stored in the capacitor okay this is little bit crazy let's go step by step so i have a capacitor i have a battery i have a battery and i charge it so when i charge it when i charge it then what happens the amount of heat loss is exactly equal to amount of energy stored amount of energy stored in the capacitor so the amount of energy stored in that capacitor will be heat loss heat loss is mentioned as e so i'll just put it as e so this is the energy stored in that capacitor which is which is basically e only now what you do what you do you take that capacitor but this time you put a slab inside it you put a dielectric slab inside it it is still connected to the battery is still connected to the battery now the moment you add a dielectric slab what will happen to the capacitance the capacitance will become two times yes or no the capacitance will become two times yes or no the voltage across the capacitor the voltage across the capacitor is still the same it has not changed voltage across the capacitor is still the same so the energy stored energy stored in the capacitor the formula is half capacitance into potential difference square into potential difference square so that means that means if voltage has not changed half is a constant capacitance if it has become two times two times that means the energy stored also has become two times energy has also become two times what was the original energy what was the ener original energy stored it was e right so it will become e into 2 basically 2e 
टू ई इज द एनर्जी लॉर्ड ऑफ यू सेट बी ऑप्शन वेरी गुड गाइस वेरी गुड वेरी गुड वेरी गुड प्राउड ऑफ ऑल ऑफ यू प्राउड ऑफ ऑल ऑफ यू वेरी नाइस एंड दैट वॉज द फाइनल क्वेश्चन बट इज द जर्नी ओवर ऑब्वियसली नॉट टूमोरो जस्ट आफ्टर योर एग्जाम वी आर गोइंग टू मीट ऑल ऑफ यू वी आर गोइंग टू हैव अ गुड राउंड ऑफ डिस्कशन विल बी इन अ मच लाइटर मूड ऑब्वियसली बिकॉज एग्जाम्स आर ओवर doesn't matter how your result was whether it was bad good everybody all the avengers team should assemble on the an academy neat english channel because that's the place where all the warriors all the future doctors all the avengers are going to assemble that's the only place that should come to your mind so make sure tomorrow after the exam maybe even if you are in the rickshaw or maybe in the car or maybe in the train and you are going back home we are going to start the session and you guys have to be here how was today's session do let me know in the comments down below all the very best this was the final session yes there will be some more videos which will be coming motivation and to wish you all the best for sure with the academic session that's it that's the closure and i'm so glad that Uh, i'm closing this i'm privileged thank you so much guys all the very best i know you guys are going to perform really 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 well take care see you on the other side assalamu alaikum captain shreya signing off